And we are back. Couch Company Podcast. I'm John. With me as always, Tyler. Uh, it's not quite my rhythm. That All right, let me go again. Thing. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? Uh, not much. What's going on? It is March. Yeah. Beware the Ides oh, of yeah, March. It is. What, what are the Ides of March? Um, it's like a oracle or something. Oh. Isn't that Shakespeare? It's uh, um, sure. Caesar. Julius Caesar, right? Beware mm-hmm. the Ides of March. Mm-hmm. That's when he gets yeah. fucked. Yeah. Maybe I'm just combining it. He eyes in the back know. of his head. He'd he see mu- he would have. And to Brute. Yeah. Anyways, I might have gotten that completely wrong. I'm sure I'm getting a text <laughs> about it right now, either confirming or denying. But it is yeah. March, and the reason I bring that up is because Tyler just got his new and oh. improved, dare I say, uh, diet routine, <laughs> diet boxes. It, it, what do you call them? <laughs> Tell you what, it is improved. The the meals are much better than okay. what I make. Okay. Yeah. That's a good start. So why don't why don't you run the audience? Because you were telling me about it. I don't think we talked about it on air. So this is Oh, maybe not. Yeah. Okay. Why yeah. don't you run us through what's going on? So I was doing great dieting on my own pace for about two weeks. Great in air then, quotes though, but yeah. Well, I mean I was staying I was sticking to it. I, yeah, when I no, say great, yeah, sure, I mean sure, I was sure. I was holding to it. I was pretty strict. Yes. Uh, and then we went to uh, Hofper House, and this was like this is a month ago, a month, ago, month yeah. plus, yeah. yeah. And then I just fell off the wagon, and then got run over by the wagon, and then yeah. got up, hobbled into the front of the wagon to get rolled over again. That's a great foreshadowing for the movie I'm going to talk about. But yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, yeah. Anyways, you gotta, when you fall off the wagon, yeah, you gotta, it was bad. I went, I went yeah. hard, and then it was just like the natural. Oh, uh, well, I'll start the, the first of the week or yep. I'll start the first of the month or I'll yep. do whatever. Um, so I do want to put a caveat on here that being March 1st was not my choice of like, oh, I'm going to start in the first of the month. That was just when the, the box delivery came. was going to yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, so I, I'm on the TikToks. I factor, the company factor pops up. I think it's a subs, uh, subset of like uh, HelloFresh, either HelloFresh oh, okay. or Home Chef or one of the, one of the big ones. And that's like, where they send you a box, but you still prepare ingredients, it, though, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So this is like a, a spinoff still under that parent company. Hashtag sponsored? I don't think yet. Oh, uh, okay. I thought Especially you were going to surprise with, me. with what I'm going to be talking about. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. That's but, right, yeah. But then uh, it's it's just pre-cooked meals, which right. is T-Dog's favorite, where it's like, oh. Just pop them in the microwave. Two minutes. Yep. Good deal. It is worth noting these are not frozen. These are, come they come in like a refrigerated box. Okay. Uh, but they're not like, it's not like a frozen TV dinner. It's a slightly higher quality than that. <laughs> and one step up. Yeah. I, I mean, they, they are pretty good. So I got that. Uh, before they came, I got an email that said, hey, here's a, a urgent, I forget how they word it. It was like urgent voluntary recall. Oh. And I was like, I, uh, what? And essentially the all the uh, the cauliflower mash Stuff that they have because yeah. I, I got the, like the locale options because they have like keto, locale, oh, vegan, right. whatever. And the locale uh, <laughs> cauliflower mash, which is like a base for a lot of those meals, mm-hmm. uh, could possibly have plastic parts in it. Oh, uh, one of the manufacturers they get it from because they get it from like a bunch of different places, and one of them could have been contaminated. They got word of, so it's not to be fair, not factor's fault. It's the whoever provides that food, right? But. They were like, hey, here's a list of the meals. Now, I read the, the email wrong. I thought that I was losing out on like 11 of my meals. But it turns out I only lost two of them, which isn't too oh, bad. Nice. So I actually have a pretty good understanding of like what each of the meals taste like so far. Anyway, I tried it. I started on the first. It's what's today now? The fourth. Yeah. Uh, so I've had I had one meal on the first and then about two a, everything about else. About a week, right? Yeah. So I, I've gone through about half. Um they're pretty good. Okay. Like they're, so I, I, a lot of it's like just chicken, like shredded chicken, whole chicken. Is it just like, do you get a couple meals per day or how does it work? Is it like a whole day's I, worth of meals? Just no, dinner? I, paid, I paid for lunch and dinner. Lunch and dinner. Yeah. Okay. So I got 14 boxes for over the course for of a week. Seven yeah. days. Okay. 14 boxes around like 170 bucks. So it'd be wow. 170 bucks a week uh, to, to go with that. Now yeah. the first box is half off. So okay. I got that. And they credited me because of the the mix up or whatever. They credit me on my fifth box. <laughs> oh right, right. Uh, they they will take another half off there. And then for the first five, it's such a weird thing, man. For the first five boxes, I get like twenty percent off. 
That is a weird basically number. Basically, yeah. one hundred and thirty dollars for fourteen meals. So like ten bucks for a this meal. one. And then is it going to be a reoccurring? Do you how's what's the verdict? So said it was good. I, ha- I have two weeks. So I have I have this initial box. Yeah. Um, I paid for another week already. Okay. Um, and then. I want to go for 21 days. That's my thing because that's like the, the habit forming thing. I think that's made up. Probably, but I can't get past two weeks. <laughs> no, and if this fair. is a way to force me to get past two weeks because you know me, like if I'm putting that much money on yeah, something, you have to. I'm not going to deviate from that. Uh, Unless the ball lands in the middle. Uh, Actually, no, you still won't deviate uh, 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 even though I told no, you I, to. Yeah, that's a, that's a little casino joke. But yeah, inside. Well, we told uh, it on the podcast. That's true, yeah. Um, <laughs> go find that episode. Yeah, yeah, uh, good luck. Well, no, it's, it's easy to find. Oh, uh, here we go. Tangent. Grab it's it It's easy hole. to find it because I do have that as one of the uh, Oh, it's a roll-out wheel? Album art. Yeah, yeah it's a nice. roll-out wheel, so you can find that story. There we go. Anyway, overall, meals are good. Takes good. two minutes to prep. Good. I am doing the thing where, uh, so you, you punch... Uh, holes in the plastic you throw in the microwave for two minutes um now you can you can eat it right out so that so you punch holes in it to get a little bit of plastic in there well yeah you're gonna get the plastic mixed around but then you also want it to vent i got you yeah if if the plastic just stays on top it doesn't melt and kind of go evenly yes dude no i'm totally with Um, you okay (laughs) i've been throwing it on a plate and like chelsea was like well why are you doing it's like well you know you trick your mind into like hey this is a this is a better prepared meal than i ever do right like i'm talking i'll take like two chicken breasts throw it on a plate pour barbecue sauce on it and like a cup of feta sugar free <laughs> and like that's my thing uh no no oh. barbecue sauce is real uh, bad okay. it's real good no. real bad well that's yeah that's what i'm saying anyways yeah. well the sugar free stuff like is not good but but better uh, for the diet the nice thing too is the uh the app will track it so you can you can say like okay i want like four between one and four stars it's a four star system so for one, me wait what yeah it's a it's what it's rating it yeah like it'll say like hey th- these are the meals app you got or whatever this week. yeah okay um, so what's nice about that is then all the one stars, I'm like, I'm never getting this again. I've yeah. only had one of that. Like yeah. I, the, the meal I had last night, it's not the meal's fault. It's just, it just was bad. Like it was bad. Right. It was exactly what it should have been. I just don't like, uh, it's like a risotto thing. Okay. It, it wasn't, it wasn't great. For now, me. do you get to pick the food that you get? Do oh, they yeah. give you just yep. an assortment? So you just tried them all this time, yes. and now we're weeding out the ones yeah. you know, like, oh, yeah. okay. So for instance, I've had two meals. Uh, and they're both actually taco bowls, which I thought was interesting. They're both like shredded chicken, and one was a little bit more like Mexican-inspired, and one was a little bit more like, um, I guess the closest thing would be like almost like a chicken bacon ranch type of thing. Oh, okay. Which was still like under 500 calories, which was good. Yeah. Um, and I had a chicken parm. All three of those were like great. So like the, the third week that I'm doing this, I'll at least get two of those right. and stuff. So you yeah. start kind of weeding out and like, okay, what's what's, what's good, good and, yeah. and, and that sort of thing. Um, that all being said, I do have free boxes to give away. So if you're interested, I got them. If anyone's listening that's interested, I got them. So <laughs> okay. I think I have four or five boxes that I can I can give to people. Wait, because you don't like them or... Are these the no, ones that are recalled? <laughs> no, 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 no. So, so the recall is done. Like that's that's those are the you trash. could get it now, and it's totally fine. Okay. Um, no, it. So they call it, when they say a box, they're talking the, sh- the the shipping box that they give it to you. Yeah. So it's like, hey, for this week, here's your box. I don't know how many meals come in it. I would assume not a like you're probably not getting fourteen meals, right? But it's free, so it's like if you want to just try. Oh, I I want to try. I'm making this up because I don't know how many meals you get. Six meals. Yeah. Here you go. It's free, and then you just cancel it, and you're good. Wow. Yeah. Hey, so, hey, so it sounds like if it's working interested. out. Yeah. Um, the other thing, too, is uh, I think they give you – I know with mine, they gave me like $100 off uh, wine. What's like a wine – there's like a wine box subscription store thing. Oh, I yeah. I don't do. know what it's called, but I Yeah, know so I got like about. $100 off that. That and seems like it kind of counteracts the uh, whole dieting thing, huh? Well, I don't like wine, so I'm just saying. But like, if, <laughs> if you're interested in it, that was kind of something that, that we got. But I keep just sure this isn't hashtag sponsored. Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm being real with it. Like, I yeah. think overall, is it like gourmet meals? No, you, no. you can pay extra to get like fillets and stuff. I'm like, Ooh, how, how good is this being right. microwaved? You know, that would be interesting. Maybe because you can, could you uh, do the upgrade for a week just to try it and then go back? To well, the it's regular? per meal. So it'd be oh, like, oh, you want this like quote unquote premium, premium meal? meal. Yeah. That's that's an extra eight, um, eight bucks or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. So it's a lot. I'd, I'd go for it one week. Why not? <laughs> Why not? For a filet, man, I'd, Chelsea can make really good steak. Yeah, it's not going to be gonna... 200 calories <laughs> or whatever. The steak would. Steak would be around four. 
Yeah, probably. Maybe five if you added like a... Yeah, but if you're doing it well, I mean, it's a lot of butter. It's yeah. a lot of... Anyway, all that being said, I'm doing uh, oatmeal in the morning. Yep. So two packs of oatmeal. That that's around awful. 320. That just sounds terrible. It's actually like... You I've like been, oatmeal? It, it keeps me satiated well into lunch. Okay. And I've been working through lunch fairly recently where like I only get maybe like a half hour. So what I do is I'll cook my meal for two minutes, wolf that down, and then I, I go walk for a mile. And then I hey. walk back to work. That's nice. That's the other thing is I've been walking a mile every every day. Except okay. yesterday when it was raining. I opened up the door and uh, I have my, obviously my Apple Watch. So I open up the door. It's raining. I close the door, <laughs> walk back up the stairs and then shut off my uh, my little workout thing. And every time I do any workout, it sends it to all my Apple Watch friends. Right. So me and Lindsay uh, will like message each other like, oh, hey, good job or whatever. And it's just like auto responses. And uh, it was like I walked like 0.01 miles or something. And she was like, way to go. And I'm like, okay. Like, <laughs> jerk. That's fantastic. She's like, you could not do it. You have to do that. Yeah. You Apple Watch is ruthless, man. Yeah, so whenever, whenever you get it, it will give you auto responses. Yep. And half of them are like, way to go. Great job. Like trophy, trophy, trophy or whatever. Like emojis. And then the other half are like a couch emoji, a potato emoji, and like a sad face or like a you got to be kidding me, or like wow. you suck. Not you suck, but like those type of responses. It's like, man, like then it was asking me like, hey, do you want to challenge Lindsay to a weak competition? I'm like, no, I do not. Like she's nope. going to kick my ass. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. I don't know. That's savage though. It I is. wouldn't expect yeah. it to be, uh, I would expect it to take it, a gentler approach. It sucks too. Cause like, I feel bad. Like, and I probably just need to be real with myself and pull it down. But like, I have my movement calories at 800, which is just, high like i'm never hitting that just working from home unless i go out and like walk a few miles which i should but then like everyone else on my friends list is like between maybe like 350 and 500 so it's like everyone is like knocking out their goals chelsea knocks out her rings like it's going out of style because she's a teacher and you know walking around constantly right um but me i'm just sitting like <laughs> wow that's getting, it's like the nature done. of the job man i know it sucks no yeah, it does for sure Anyway, that, well, yeah. I'm happy the how how are you? The boxes are gone. <laughs> well, I was telling you before we started recording. This week's been rough, a rough one. Yeah. Um. I also too fell off the wagon. Although I don't think anything sparked it. I just uh, well, like I was saying, my buddy who I usually go to the gym with, uh, couldn't go this week. So, yeah. it just didn't go this week. I also had a lot of things going on. Had a work function. We had D and D again. I, I, I mean, Beer Fest that. probably wasn't. wasn't yeah, maybe year, Beer right? Fest was the catalyst because I definitely didn't go after that. I don't think I went the next day. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that was rough. Although Beer Fest was fun. But yeah, so I didn't go this week at all. Um, and now I feel like garbage. Yeah. So that's that's how that works. But you're going today. So I am going today. On the, theoretically. Back on the wagon. The horse. Yeah, we're, just, we're going to try to get it on the horse strong yeah. wagon. Yeah. Do you have stuff going on at night? No, not right now. I kind of want to play see it. Or, or sponsored. Sea of Thieves or balloons. I want to. We should get back. I want to play something that's just dumb and fun tonight. Yeah, that's that's my goal. So yeah. if you're around, I would like to play something with you. Yeah, dude, I'm down. I'd, I'd play COD too. I'd have to reinstall COD. Oh, that's I, a good COD? point. I don't, I'd have to reinstall Sea of Thieves. I just I'm so do I it because yeah. I I uh, replaced that with Atomic Heart, which was a mistake because I'd rather play Atomic Heart is bad. Do we want to just let's shout just rip that out? Yeah, it's not like, good. I dude, I couldn't get past the fucking intro, bro. It was so boring. Yeah, it was so boring. And we were talking about this before, but I wanted on air mm-hmm. for all eternity. Like comparing it to Bioshock because that's just like the most natural comparison. It's like Bioshock puts you right in the fucking game, man. Like we were talking about the original Bioshock. You start on a plane that crashes. Yeah, swim to this weird statue island thing, and then go down to this underwater Atlantis that's fucked. Yeah. But with like good writing and uh, good absolutely. monologue. Yeah, yeah, it's like well, um the first I would want to say like 5 minutes is all silent, right? Like cuz you don't get um Andrew's voice until you get down the elevator and shit, right? More or less. Uh, I, I think you might be monologuing he, to yourself on the plane. Yeah, you have like an intro on the plane, and then you, I mean, it's but not But you swim long. to the island, and it's you're not talking to yourself. Yeah, but that island swim is maybe like a minute. Like, it's not. Yeah, it's but not you go down the elevator, and then maybe there's like a um, welcome to Rapture, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's Andrew Ryan's monologue. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it's like Fair. right off the No, yeah, it's good dialogue. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm point. saying you, you take the first maybe like 10 minutes of Bioshock and it's better than the first like, I mean, how many, like I had to have played an hour. That and intro is like what, 20, 20 minutes? I don't, 25 I don't even minutes? Know if I'm out of the intro. I still keep getting like. Well, I'm talking about like the, I'm just walking around. Oh yeah. Fucking That's super annoying. This is awful. Yeah. I'd rather be standing in a line at Disneyland <laughs> or something. Yikes. I don't know about that, but yeah. It's the same thing. I'm just sitting around looking at interesting things and just doing the, absolutely nothing. Did you try walking into the balloons around Atomic Heart? No. I'm not saying balloons need to like react exactly like balloons, Ugh. but they are like straight up unmoving. Oh, they're just like, rock, rocks. Just yeah. cement. Like you walk into them and they don't, they don't just don't do anything. Yeah. That's like, okay. when you know. You that's, know, we always yeah. talk about those little <laughs> extra touches, right? And that's yeah. when you know you got a real good game on your hands. But no, I was just super bored to tears and um, maybe I should give it more of a chance, but I, I just don't want to. I don't know. Well, yeah. here's the thing, man. If you can't draw me in, I'm not saying you have to have the best intro of all time, but if I'm bored to tears yeah. in the intro, you're, you're doing something wrong, right? Like I, you got to at least... It, it's just like there isn't as much like, and maybe it's just the way that the Twitter alg- algorithm works. But like, there was so much just hate for first spoken on the dialogue, and I actually think like the clips that the people were like, "Oh, this this dialogue's so bad," like it was better than Atomic Heart, like easily yeah. better. No, the main character in Atomic Heart is, I would say, equal, equally as annoying. As Forspoken. And it's so funny that they both have magical hand things. Yeah, right. right? It's yeah. like the same shit. I don't know, man. I agree. But Forspoken still felt better. Like, it actually makes me want to just pony up and buy Forspoken and play You'll that. regret that. Probably. Regret well, I'm going to wait for a sale, but I'm, yeah, I'm just yeah. saying, like, that's, You'll that's have where my head's at. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, Forspoken was, was awful from what I saw. I don't know. Just fucking terrible. And well, uh, you told me the ending, so it's kind of well. Oh, what, yeah, I told you the whole plot, thing? dude. I couldn't help it, dude. I saw the whole plot, I was like, this is garbage. Yeah, this and is it, actually it, like when you, when you come from Hogwarts, which is so oh my god, yeah. Well, we were coming from because this came out before that, we were coming from Horizon for what? Oh, no, 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 I was talking still in Atomic Heart. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. sure. You're coming from Hogwarts yeah. for Atomic Heart. I was talking for Spoken, for Spoken, like, same thing. You come yeah. from Horizon to For Spoken, it's like yeah. this, you know, here's a clear <laughs> difference in open world. I played, uh, I started Metroid. I tell you that. You yeah. got Metroid on, on Switch. No, the highest rated game the so far rated on rated open, open just critic. by far, by like 10 For this points. year. Yeah. For this year. No, not 10 I, points. I yeah. Hi-Fi Rush by like five. What's Hi-Fi Rush? 89? 89. Oh, okay. So this six. is 94. Yeah, so it's 95 now. Yeah. 94? 95. You sure? I think so. Cheeseburger? I'll cheeseburger that. No, I don't want to. Okay. All right. <laughs> Anyways, you're playing Metroid. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, I told you. Did I not tell you this? It's, look, I told look, look, you this. Look. You're like, it's the intro. John, it's I got to gotta play this. I got to play this, dude. It's the, look, it's the best if it's game of all time. If it's 95, you have to I play I literally it. brought up Open Critics Hall of Fame for last year. Frosted Donuts had a 90 fucking five. Yeah, but Frosted Donuts is good. Yeah, but it's not a 90. F- you're saying Frosted Donuts is better than Horizon. On the same par well, as no, because it's apples and God, oranges. God of War. It's apples and oranges. What I'm no, saying is it's not. Frosted Donuts, it, for it what is, it is, is a very, very good game. Okay. I understand the argument that, you know, it's different genre, different category, but yeah. at the end of the day, right? Mm-hmm. While it is, can the best puzzle game like that, I think it was a puzzle game, right? Yeah. Frosted Donuts. Oh, yeah. It's like a puzzle yeah. game. So is the best like puzzle game like that? Uh huh. The greatest puzzle game of all time. Can that reach the same level as the greatest open world? You gotta look at it. RPG of all, like you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you gotta look AAA at it from budget, like from uh, the the perspective of okay, like what does it sell out to do? What's the genre? Yeah. What's the the time thing? Because like as much as I love Horizon, is it respectful of your time the entire time? Like no, I think it falters in certain aspects. And I yeah, love Horizon. I don't think right? it's perfect. But then with with Frosted Donuts, it's like all the puzzles are like the perfect length. When you get them, it's that cool aha moment. When you like, there, there. Yeah, but was it life changing for like puzzle games? Because here's the thing: based on our mm-hmm. scale, right, mm-hmm. a ninety five or whatever it got, and yeah. maybe it, maybe it got a little less than that. But I think it was like mid nineties. That's like platinum territory, right? And and to me, on our scale, platinum's like well, ninety six is platinum. I I. That's like game changing. I see what you're saying. Like, did it change the game for puzzle games? Like, I think something like God of War, which we had in the high 90s, yeah. is game changing. 
Like, we will look back oh. at that forever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Was God of War game changing? Let's say the 2018 version at least. Okay. Okay. I can give you that. Yeah, I know because you're weird, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Though? Yeah. Yeah. And so it's I, like, to me, it's like, okay, look, I get it. It's a very good puzzle see, game. It's at the top of the puzzle game field. But I mean, come on, man. Like, what are we talking about here? Like, this is, this is insane that we're putting this stuff on the same level. I think, I think anything gold. So what, what is that? 90. It's like 86. 80, 86 to 95. Yeah. Uh, That's anything, a big range. It is. Yeah. A, anything 86 to 95 in gold uh, should be counted among the top tier of that genre. I'll give it gold. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, I'll yeah, give no, it gold. No. Right. But when Frosted I'm, Donuts, is, it's a golden donut. Yeah. For sure. But then but, that, that falls right under the thing. What I'm saying is... No, it doesn't. That's, it did that's not get top 96, gold. Though. That's top gold. That's like... This, right, almost, right. this almost changed puzzle games forever. How do we get to this? How do we get to <laughs> Frosted Donuts? Because we were I talking about open okay, critic. Well, I'm, I'm bringing this up because I don't think it got that high. Okay. You're probably right. I prob <laughs> but, 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 but I guess what makes me really I upset... I hate donuts. No, I don't. We had a whole top five about them. I think what really makes me upset is the fact that it got better than Horizon, which is just totally absurd yeah. to me. Because right. Horizon was just super fresh, on. freshly frosted. Ninety one. That is that is a solidly placed. That is an absolute ninety one ass ninety one game. I hate puzzle games. If you, I, clearly, <laughs> if you want to, you're sweating, dude. Holy shit, I am getting so, heated. I know, I'm so hot. Getting heat about this. Uh, I'm sorry, dude. You can have it. All right, I'll no, give no, it no. to you. <laughs> what, what I'm saying is, uh, if you're if you're looking at Freshly Frosted and you want to put it like a, so we technically that's rated the same that we have Hi-Fi Rush. Yeah. Yeah. Are you yeah. willing to make that? Yeah. Make that? Yeah. Claim? Because it's the I, same as Hi-Fi Rush. I think Hi-Fi Rush is, should be talked about in the rhythm genre mm. as a very good rhythm game. Right. Um, and I think Freshly Frosted is a very good, because like to me, if you play Freshly Frosted, quote unquote, correctly, you're sitting on your couch with your Switch or your Steam Deck or whatever, and you're just, you're, you're playing a, a puzzle game that would be perfect on the phone and stuff like that, and it's just like a fun little brain teaser thing. It does everything it's supposed to well, and there's just it's a it's a good package. Yeah. Now, if it got like a ninety six, and you're going into platinum territory, to me that brings something new to the genre to um, set it apart, right? So, like we call things Metroidvanias, or we call things, you know, like. Uh, like souls like stuff and right. like it's it's these genres that come about that, that create the genre. maybe that's not a, a good description but it's like uh look at uh, uh hades right yeah to me that's like a this did something to that genre this like this created a uh a push forward or like this kind of moved the needle in that thing that's why it deserves to be like platinum yeah i can see that and i agree I think you have to be careful with that definition because you're subject to, you know, there are some games that maybe push a certain aspect of a game forward, yeah. but the overall package, like you have to consider everything that makes a gold has to obviously be in place for a platinum, right? Like the foundation needs to be there sure. and it has to be yeah. well-rounded, you know, in a solid game. Yeah. Fundamentally well, a game that, and then has that, that also. And, yes. Yeah. And then diamond is just balloons tower defense six. It's up there. Blo Bloons, Bloons is great. Is it's the best tower defense game of all. What time. do we give Bloons? Ninety eight. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> something like that. No, but, I like I give it, we gave it like a ninety six or something. Maybe like a plat. But, but it deserves it, or right? Maybe like a gold, or maybe it's like I top think gold. so. I think so. People I, disagree with us all the time. It's in my top twenty five games. I think it's in mine too. Give me it? another game. I can just turn it on. Yeah. Turn my brain off. And just have a fantastic time with my friends. Blue, or by is, myself. Blues is fantastic. It's 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 amazing. Monkeys, <laughs> darts, yeah, balloons. It's, you can't get better. It's it's peak I, gaming experience. I agree with you. And it's better than freshly frosted. Well, you don't like puzzle games. That's I hate the whole puzzle thing. Games. I Am I gonna be, burn an I'm gonna burn an hour of my media coverage to, I hope you do. To I really do have you play freshly frosted. Have have me play all all the puzzle games and then I'll I don't even know what genre you don't like, but I'll figure something out. Uh, what's what's uh, probably just honestly probably RPGs. If I'm being honest with myself, really, yeah. Like if any any like uh, I'll like just make you play all of Persona like, turn based stuff. I just I ugh, ugh. just burn the rest of my time on oh Persona Five. Jeff's still playing that. Shout I out to Jeff. Love it. What, what killed it. Jeff? Yeah. What killed Jeff? 
Yeah, what, what killed, killed Jeff? Jeff? I don't yeah, know. we never really find that out. It's kind of like this ongoing question. I think yeah, it's a it's an important question, but um, he's still streaming that. Do you think he put that on his in. tombstone? What? However, what, he dies. What killed Jeff? Yeah. Oh, how he died? Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's pretty morbid. It's I, morbid. I hope talk he does about it. talk about a great. I'm all about that corporate identity. Pay, man. Pay off, yeah. yeah. I got to talk to him about that. <laughs> no, I think I think that's an interesting idea. <laughs> like change all the handles, like have it ready to go. So like whenever whenever he gets kicks the bucket, like all his like Twitch accounts and everything change from like what killed Jeff to like I don't know, like falling anvil killed Jeff yeah. or something, you know. It was falling anvil's account for That is morbid. I probably I feel a little bad talking well, about that, yeah. but it's such a great Pay it's off. great marketing, yeah. Well, he doesn't benefit from it at all, though. He doesn't, but his next of kin would. Yeah, that's true. It's like <laughs> the greatest play ever. It's uh, like a, a lifetime's yeah. worth of anticipation. <laughs> you think he'll still talk to us after after Thursday or Wednesday, whenever we play D anD D? I think Should so. We talk I stopped about in that? His, I stopped in his stream, and and he was, he was happy. Good. But you know, maybe that's maybe he was in streamer mode so we uh know. we played D on on wednesday night i contest every, i still did absolutely died. nothing wrong we killed everyone killed each other everyone killed each other it was straight up quentin tarantino just everyone. oh shakespeare i'd say shakespeare sure shakespeare is really the og tarantino i would i would like full party wipes factor. typically are like we're going up against like a big dragon boss right and we get wiped and we die yeah. and it was like well we tried and this was straight up like Ryan kills you. You kill Ryan. I kill Ryan. Uh, who I guess Dwayne, Dwayne, Dwayne kills, kills you. me, and then Jeff and kills then Jeff Dwayne. Kills Dwayne. <laughs> yep. Technically, Dwayne killed both of us because you were just knocked out. Uh, well, I was bleeding out. I yeah. think, and then uh, oh no, no, I was. You sur- you I survived, survived yeah. the the so crazy. And then he just chopped we my just, head we off. We just murdered each other. And like I wonder. I don't know. We got to talk to. It was all over a DM. mushroom too. Yeah, a talking mushroom. Yeah, I wanted to eat a talking mushroom. World War Three, and <laughs> look, I we were partners. Yeah, yeah. And your I rolled goal for, in life I is to every eat every mushroom. Mm-hmm. And as a good partner, I was going to get that mushroom for you. So yeah. he overheard my plan to take the mushroom, mm-hmm. shot me in the back, mm-hmm. missed, and then I tried to stop him by casting a spell, non lethal spell. I might add. <laughs> And it uh, didn't work, and then he shot me again, <laughs> and then I died. Yeah. And then you went berserk. For a second berserk. time campaign. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Because apparently- like, I let, look, man, I let the, the dice I control hate, my actions. I did nothing wrong. I will contend that to, <laughs> for the rest of the time. That was, that was so easily avoidable. Yeah. I didn't make a single attack. Oh, my God. That's I, wild to me. I was thinking, because I'm like, are we too buddy-buddy? Well, yeah, it was like, yes, we it were. Was essentially, two D and D groups coming together. Yes, right? and that's a huge problem, right? And I wanna, I wanna gel well with the group. And I, I feel like I, I, I do. Well, I thought I did, and then if <laughs> I, if I ever DM <laughs> going forward, I mm. will implement a rule where because like what how it functioned this time was everyone wrote their like backstories and stuff and their characters before they got there yeah and i know jeff in particular like really likes doing that i think like i think they all do right uh-huh. they like go really hard in the backstory which look i get it but for me you have to incorporate everyone at the table into mm-hmm. your backstory or else like you will quickly right find out oh wait i don't care about this other character, right? So like I was, my character wouldn't have any motivation to help them out or right. You know what I mean? So like to me, there has to be forced ties into the yeah. backstory so that like hundred percent and everyone, like you guys have to be a group and then tell me how you formed a group. And then, so like what I would do is I would have session zero where everyone comes together did, and you did, write the backstory together. That? Oh, no, because okay. they, yeah. they came. It's like, okay, well, I, you know, here's what my character did. And then we kind of formulated how we all met up, yeah. which really was a stretch. Did we Am make I? up our backstory? Because like, we didn't talk before. Yeah. And that was all like just spur of the moment. And we were just oh, my, messing around with it. Well, right? my philosophy for D&D forever has been I have no backstory yes. or very little. Yeah. And I just figured out as I go. Because, yeah. and this is just very much me thing. My philosophy to the game, philosophy to the game, like it's no, fucking I mean, serious. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> my your approach strats, to the game is strats. like, uh, I find when I do like a very long and complex backstory, 
I'm like trying to force my actions and my my character. You're to locked fit in. That. Yeah. I'm locked in exactly yeah. right. And to me, I I just want to be free playing. So I just want an idea for a character. Yeah. And then I find as I start role playing, it kind of morphs and I kind of find what he really <laughs> is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I, and then that's what you know I eventually go with. So this this one I did probably had too much backstory. I didn't like. The guy I had actually, I I just felt like because we were doing. If you remember, we you. were doing like kind of random roles, yeah, for everything like race right. and and class and yeah and backstory and stuff and so alignment. Like, I, I mean, hate that. My, I hate all my that. guy was supposed to be like a really calm, like because I was like a monk, right, yeah. right, right, right. And the the nice thing is, I didn't have the backstory. Yeah. So then by the by the time I was you know murdered high on mushrooms and <laughs> <laughs> cut through by a friend uh my my dude was just like the dumbest like just stupid character which i loved like i actually uh, the, the sad thing is i actually kind of liked my character yeah he was like funny. it was just it was just dumb like comedy guy um who just ate everything yeah. so like there was that kind of I think because this was the second longest campaign. Well, actually, it might be the longest campaign if you don't count like Thok being in like multiple ones, like my my work guy. But like I was thinking the other the other night, like I think it was the, the night after we all died, and I was like, well, that happened. <laughs> like, what do we yeah. do now? Um, I was thinking like, why doesn't just Jeff just Jeff? You just tell me what I'm doing, and then I'll I'll just role play. Like I like acting to something else. Oh, uh, so point. you're the opposite of me. Well, you like having a. I, structure. Well, I I like having um uh like guidelines of okay, this is this is like uh I'm trying to say cuz like on one hand I don't like having the guidelines on like how I should act, but I like having like a I know you because you are like my brother. Okay, cool. I'm your brother. But like you shouldn't be like you were imprisoned falsely for a million years of blah 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 blah. Like Anything that requires me to have like a strong reaction to like if something were to happen, I just don't care. Mm. That's the thing. Right. Anything that would require me to have a strong reaction needs to happen within the game, be, and I need to have a build up to it. What is the word I'm looking for? Authentic. Uh, yeah. Like it needs to yeah. be like we experience this thing together, we right. grow together. Like and then your crew, happens. like your crew, Thox crew, hundred percent. Yeah. And, yeah. And the problem is with that. Now like, that's a great backstory. Now you know what I mean. It is, yeah. but. I would never want to do another boat campaign because I feel like we're just trying to capture lightning Recapture. in a bottle again and yeah. that will, it will never be as good as that. Yeah. So it's like that philosophy of the characters that come about, the group is essentially making those. So it's for, one, it's, for the audience, sorry, podcast. Uh, sorry, yeah. Thok, who's Tyler's most famous character, is an orc. Yeah. Uh, and we had a campaign where he was like a pirate. And this was like height of Sea of Thieves, so Tyler was very into it. I was like very he's into like, piracy. yep, I can see the ship. I know exactly what everything is. Um, yeah, and we got really into it. We named every crew member, but and the, they all, the, all had a unique the uh, group named him. I think that's yeah, that's yeah, part no, of right, it. right. I yeah. love that too, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. And anyways, they all died. <laughs> yeah, at the, the <laughs> end, and yeah. they just died, and that was it. And but yeah. but do you see what like where if the DM. The DM doesn't need to be like, okay, here's this and this is his name and this and this is his name and this is what you have to do and here's everything. Like the way that that was built was like, okay, you're on a ship, you have your first mate. If I'm the captain, I'm the one naming that first mate. So it's like you you get you draw mm. ownership from the different players, yeah, and put it into the world. So like the players are building the world with the DM, right? And it's kind of this fine line, but then like that's how you get ownership. That's how you like start to build a bond with just the universe that you're playing in that you care about stuff because when the moment and <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later but like um the moment a game is like 200 years ago there was a bit i'm like i don't care tell <laughs> tell me about the great calamity i don't give it like fine um i need it to to start off very very slow and just build but and for build some and reason we forgive uh tolkien for that do we though i do but do we how do, how does Lord of the Rings start, man? You know what I mean? How does it start? I'm trying to remember. In the Shire? It starts in a hole in the ground. Like, that's exactly it, where it's like you start off and you are this nobody hobbit. Right. And you're just in this this quiet little town. And then this random guy's like, hey, let's go on an adventure. And it's not like he's like taking you straight into Mordor the next frame. He's like, we're just going to go walking. Actually, the movie starts off with the exposition. It's like... 
two million years ago, there was this huge well, battle. And yeah, well, the movie, the, the movie, but the the book the doesn't. Book, the book starts in the Shire. The book literally starts talking about hobbits. Okay. And then the next book talks about hobbits more in case you didn't read The Hobbit. Yeah, right. So it's just like... <laughs> true, true. It it lets you connect to something that's small. It's like, hey, we're all farmers. And I, I think I've already talked about this where like if I was going to D&D a campaign, like, uh, like DM a campaign, it would be like, you're all farmers. You're not fighters. You're not magic. You're not any... Like you were just like just NPCs. And then a friggin... Dragon, dra- I was gonna say Drake and Dragon. Dragon comes Draken. down. It's a new character. Uh, oh, I love it. And just burns your entire village. Right. And just destroys it. And it's not like some overarching crazy, it could be down the line, but it's not some like over scheming plot or whatever. It's just like, oh no, like dragons came and just like destroyed our land or whatever. Yeah. Or, or something or made us weak. <clears throat> and now like a neighboring tribe is trying to attack us. And we have to like hide or do whatever. And depending on how you, handle the situation of like, okay, do you try to sneak out? Do you try to like attack them? Do you try, you know, like that sort of thing. That's how you group together and build up some sort of, uh, you know, backstory together. And then maybe you roll for what your professions were in the town. Like, mm-hmm. okay, you were a blacksmith. Here are your stats. Oh, you were the, you know, I don't know, innkeeper. Here's your stat, like whatever. And like, you just turn more into a healer or something like that. I don't know. I, it's, I, I need a, a starting point. And the book's, typically will do that for you if you yeah follow book, right? i really enjoy dming from a book because it gives you that structure and i love just being free to do whatever i want though so i find myself deviating from the book a lot but as long as i have that kind of safety net to go back to yeah like if we get fucking off the rails which right. happens of course yeah. it's like okay here's an anchor point i can come back and i and i have that overarching story but like what i found playing from a book is that you just have these other plots that f- that formulate and, yeah. and then you start exploring those and it's like, you know what I mean? And yeah. sometimes you can tie it back into the initial plot and it just becomes more complex. It's pretty interesting. So I personally like DMing from a book, but like I said, as, as in terms of playing, I just find like, because what how we did it this time was like we rolled randomly for class and race and stuff, which is totally cool. But... Like the book stuff that has like, here's my alignment and here's my um, bonds and and yeah. traits. I I can't do that anymore because I, I feel so tied to that. And then it's like so manufactured. And I'm like, yep. oh, well, I want to do this, but my character wouldn't do that. And this and that. So exactly. like, I just want a blank slate and I just want to feel them out. Like, I don't know. I'm very spontaneous when it comes to that. And I just totally... Because like one of my favorite characters was... Um, What's his face? Uh, I think it was it was Josh's game, right? Uh, Where uh, I don't know. I can't remember what his name was, but it was just it was me and Thok, man. We were just <laughs> uh, oh my god, it was just so much fun. How do you feel about the D? And I, I don't mean to, for this to be like D D and D hour, but it was a significant thing. Like our entire like we died. So like that's a yeah. big thing. Uh, uh, yeah. How do you feel about when a DM it, is there too much freedom? And I understand that's the whole point of, of D&D, but a lot of the time, uh, and maybe this is just on my imagination, where if we're going into a cave, uh, it would be like, hey, you walk into a cave, there's rocks everywhere or whatever. I feel like maybe it's it would be good for the, the DM to be more like, okay, you walk into a cave, this is how you're feeling. This is what you're smelling. Like this is what, versus like, uh, just always giving you a location. Yeah. Start to kind of narrate a little bit more of the party's actions. And it's 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 this weird thing and I, this can be very subjective where it's like you're watching a movie versus like you are in the place. Mm. And that's how I get kind of like connected or so I, I think, can like visualize it a little bit better. I yeah, know. it's no, I totally understand what you're saying. Like here's the thing, when you're a DM you can't be an author, right? Right. Because there's got to be that freedom. There's got to be that investment from from the players as well because it's a joint effort. Mm-hmm. Because if you are if you have an end point in mind as the DM and you must get there and it's on the rails, like no one's going to enjoy that because right. everyone has a different perspective on what should be happening or how things are going to go. So it needs to be fluid in that matter. But I think you're right. I think when you come down to the more micro part of the game, 
that's when you have to be like an author, right? You need to visualize, you know, and feel what's going on. You need to have those kind of adjectives that, that yeah. puts you in there. Right. And, and be very detailed. And that's something I definitely need to get better at too, because it's like, it can feel really stale, right? If it's just like, oh, here's a new location. Well, it's blah, blah, understanding blah. Yeah. the characters too, like versus going into. Well, I, I don't want to tell anyone how they feel, right? That's the only thing I maybe would but see. I disagree would, with that. Would uh, well, like, you like, just said I don't. I don't want to be forced like emotions. No, no, right, right. But what I'm saying is, throughout the course of a game, I mean, we we went what 10, 11, like a dozen, a yeah. dozen weeks, yeah. right, through this campaign. Yeah, uh, which I, we were, how far were we? In the campaign? Not far. Probably not far. Not fucking uh, far at all. Eight. Uh, or, so, yeah, that's <laughs> rough. But it, it's something like this where instead of you walk into like a, I keep saying cave, like you walk into a cave and you everybody just really want to go to a cave, don't you? Yeah, really want to go to a cave. <laughs> and, and you roll a perception check. Right. Right. Yeah. To me, that's not uh, as um, engaging, as, like especially if, if you've done 10 sessions, five sessions. Right. You start to understand how people are playing their characters and what kind of drives them and stuff like that. Purely based on the game. Like screw the backstory, screw like your your ideals and things like that. You're it's, talking technically. Technically, it's yeah. just like as people are playing the game, you see how they're acting within the environment, how people are or whatever, and what they're looking for right. for their characters. So it would be something like if somebody goes into a cave and uh it's like, okay, John, uh you're looking around the room and you spot X. It's not like there's one thing in this room, roll a perception, let's see who can actually see this thing. It would be like going in, you would know uh, as a DM like how every character would be looking for. Mm, so in, mm. in the case of our, our previous campaign, it would be like, okay, Tyler, you see immediately, it, like, it just starts talking about where all the food is. It's like you see grubs over here and you see mushrooms. I was an owl. I don't know if we mentioned that. <laughs> but you see like worms over here and you see like mushrooms over here and uh, this is, you know, X, Y, Z. Um it, you know, if if somebody is uh, like a healer or or a medicine person or whatever, it'd be like you start noticing like here are the first things you personally notice, or here are the things that you're looking for. Or if uh, I was like Thok, this kind of big barbarian, and I roll a, a perception or something, it'd be like, okay, you notice this wall that has a large crack d going down it, uh, and it looks uh, somewhat flimsy. And you're pointing out all these different, um, essentially like points of interest that people could interact with versus just kind of saying you're in a big room yeah, and then making people be like, okay, what do I see? Or, or something yeah, like that, you yeah, know? Right. And, and I've never been good at that. Like that's no, the thing. So, tough. so it's like, it's ironic because I'm like, that's what I'm looking for. But then I'm also like, I never once did that when I would DM. No, it's tough. I mean, DMing is so so challenging, but you're right. And this is this is something I go back. We've had many conversations about this when we just talk about game design in general. People want to feel special, yeah. especially when we talk about a game. So when you're a specialized person, I think this totally fits into D&D &D as well. Like if I'm a healer, I want to feel like a healer. I want to make an impact. I want to be relied upon for my special specialty, you know. Yeah. Even if it's not like pure numbers, it's like, oh man, Tyler's sick. Like, mm -hmm. what's wrong with them, John? Like, you know, you're the healer. Like, and then, you know, it, but to your point, right? Like when you're in a room, I want to be like, oh wow, these are some components I could potentially use to to craft a healing potion. And I've always wanted to do that. Like in my head, in a perfect world, I would have in a perfect world for a DM, I would know everything about the world, right? Mm -hmm. And I would and I would it would be so detailed to the point where like, okay. John's a healer and here are components that he can utilize to craft certain right. potions and, and ointments and, and things of this nature. Right. So like, he's always on the lookout for that. And uh, Tyler's a blacksmith. He's always on the lookout. Like he has a pickaxe on his back. He's always on the lookout for new minerals and, and rocks and to, you know, to craft into stronger yeah. weapons or whatever. Right. So it's like, I would have all of those natural resources and like, I would be like, okay, they're in this area. These are the things they could find. And like, you'd have a table. It's like, oh, he has a 5% chance of finding this really rare element or something. Like, yeah, that's in a perfect world. That's how detailed it would be. It'd be amazing. I mean, rolling is always, uh, it is for me. And, and, oh, yeah, and yeah. that's the thing is like every, everyone's different. So like some people like combat more. I hate combat. I think it's the most boring thing in the world. Usually I'm not saying that's constant, but like 
for me, it's like, okay, you just, you, you take a turn. It's no different than like a, like a risk board game or something. You're just sitting there while other people are doing their thing and eventually right. it'll come around to you. Right. So it's trying to involve everyone at the same time. So like there are a couple things that you were talking about. Like, so like if you're healing somebody, all right, yeah. somebody got knocked out and it's like, okay, you're doing a medicine check. It's not just like a medicine check. Like what if that was like four stages, right? Yeah. So instead of like you roll, you screwed up your roll and now that person's just effed. What if it was like you go over, you analyze what's wrong with them, roll the dice, right? Mm. And then based off of that roll, that's how you analyze the person. So if you roll poorly, you analyze them incorrectly. Roll again. Now you're going to perform the the action of like let's say they they got their you know a huge gash in their chest or something it's like okay analyze it you roll fine it's like oh clearly there's a giant gaping wound in their chest right right you go over it's like okay stitch them up now you roll to stitch them up maybe it's more of a like a dexterity uh thing or or something and you're going through and as you kind of do these little micro rolls yeah overall and like the, the big thing and and it could be something where it's like you do like an overarching thing like oh you're rolling really well um uh but it, you stitched them up poorly and then that could affect so there should down be the like line there should be like, like a that. tree of different something. outcomes yeah, that exactly. could happen right depending on like and then uh, you know, like two decision points, not decision points in this case, yeah. but like a pass or fail. And right. Like, oh, pale, fail. Now we go to this part of the tree and it keeps branching off. And then there's like end points. And, and I always am a fan of like consequences, right? So but, if you just exactly. totally fucking fail everything, it's like. Right. But then, but imagine if, cause like, okay, so let's have that scenario, right? Like uh, you have two, two people fighting. One person gets uh, slashed, combat ends. This guy's laying on the ground with like a, a big, like kind of, uh, sword cut or an axe cut in his chest. Yeah. And then it could be something where it's like, okay, how do you get this party to be tight knit? It's not just like, oh, healer, hit a roll a dice <laughs> and he's fine. What if it's like, oh crap, you run over and and the guy's like convulsing on the ground and stuff. And you're just like, hey, barbarian, come the heck over here, roll for like a grapple thing to like hold him down so I can actually like stitch him up right. or something. Mm -hmm. And you start doing all of these micro rolls where it's not just one roll defines how that goes. If you're pressed for time, sure. But I feel like the more that people are involved uh, across the party um, and the more little kind of like, okay, you're going to stitch them up here. Oh, okay. Uh, you have a constitution. There's no like meta, uh, medical uh, like anesthesia or whatever. So it's like, okay, this person's doing a con throw because like he's literally going to be like sewing you together while you're like awake. Right. Right. Stuff yep. like that. Or what if the barbarian's like, uh, I'm going to knock them out or something and just like smack them. <laughs> it's like you sacrifice a few health points, just get knocked out so then you can stitch them together maybe better with an advantage or something. Like all those like crazy little interactions, I think it'd be super interesting. Yeah, the problem with this scenario is like, oh, I have a spell that you so for X amount of points. And that's totally fine, yeah. right? It's, it's one of those like, I think that what you were talking about with the spell is what I consider... Uh, like almost like mid game in my mind, right? Yeah. So obviously you have it early, but what I would view it as is that initial dragon attack on the village when we're all NPCs and have like 10 hit points and just yeah. are garbage. Right. That's what we're doing together. Now, where we're right. like, we're really just trying to scrape by. Yeah. And holy crap, when we find like an actual sword <laughs> and then become like, oh my gosh, I can do some work with this thing because right. up to this point, I've had a rock. Yeah, you know ah. that's the kind of cool thing where like you earn that stuff like you're fighting like a wolf and that's like the hardest freaking fight in the world because imagine you fighting a wolf like I've done you it. right I've, now I fighting mean, a wolf let's see maybe someone else but i'm just saying like yeah, no, it, I got you. but that's that <laughs> would be that'd be so cool right um i imagine how bonded that team would be where you don't have six different uh motivations so to speak right it's just like it's all... we're just surviving yeah, no, I'm totally with you. I guess my only counter to that is some people really enjoy that, like I said, crafting in the backstory. You know, Absolutely. Know, knowing the complete history of their character. Yeah. Um, but then have that then person. kind of lose that, right? But have that person craft it. And if it's two people, have them come together and say, all right, you guys are creating this world. And if you want to ask questions or whatever. And I, granted, I know I would just be like, hey, just tell me. Tell me my backstory and how I'm related to you. I will craft my own uh, 
personality, mm-hmm. so to speak. Yeah. And we'll we'll see how this gels and, and things like that. Like leave maybe that, like leave some room to flex there. Right. But in terms of how we know each other and and names of stuff and things like that, and I understand like normally that's like a D&D uh, or a DM thing. But if people really enjoy that, let them go crazy and start that out. Yeah. And then have the, the DM kind of fill in the explore gaps. and yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. No, I'm with you, man. So you're so you're DMing, DMing now, right? <laughs> I, w- I was thinking about it, uh, like, and I think that if I ever put that in front of Nate, he'd just kind of roll his eyes because it's like, okay, what you're gonna do like two sessions and then yeah. <laughs> be done based off of time. Well, you have one bad week of work, and it's like, yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, but so much time commitment to DM, man. But the way I was looking at it, if if I was gonna DM, I would, I would almost like redo my original campaign because I at least have all those notes still. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, so you would no no book then it would just be uh, yeah wow okay uh, if I was gonna DM I would just DM I don't I think we've do talked about what's what the future holds for <laughs> the uh, the group here but, I uh, I yeah I, I told Nate I I you know like I I'm not mad at anyone or anything like that so I hope I don't want to be mad no, at me I was like well yeah me too I was like I didn't mean to I like, contend I did him. nothing wrong but I'm not I'm also not mad at anyone else I just think it's how things worked out I think. I don't blame anyone for their actions. I think everyone played their character in that moment, more or less. <laughs> it's just our group was our group was awful. I think it was a it was a horrible. Like we just did not, yeah, have a lot of um, our reason. Yeah. We didn't like it was it was very. We all had our personal reasons, like to to get our things back. Uh-huh. That real quick for the, it's a podcast, by the way, uh, <laughs> for the audience. The the um, summary of the story is essentially we all lost something. So we go to this like magic carnival. We all lose something mm-hmm. that goes to the Feywild, like something stolen from us. So we all try to get it back. But it's all like very personal. Like it's not related at all to each other. And then we as a group weren't really related to each other either. Yeah. So it was like just random dudes uh, going and looking for this <laughs> stuff. And as we played it out, we like quickly find out like, oh, we, our characters don't really like each other at <laughs> all like that's honestly just how it worked out like yeah not the people mm-hmm. just the characters like it was like no the, the characters re- like you could just tell the characters do yeah. not like each other but it's just then you get into that weird point where it's like well we're supposed to be working together yeah because we're all friends you know outside the game and that's the fucking point of the game but then it's like wow well, this narratively does not hold up. So I feel like it was inevitable that something like that would happen. Yeah. I, but like I said, I'm, I'm totally, I told Nate, I, I would, I, I enjoy playing it. Like, uh, and I, like, I enjoy just hanging out with you guys. Yeah. I enjoy, me too. The, I enjoy the group a lot me too. and I don't, yeah, I don't want the, <laughs> to be. Yeah. I, me. I, I <laughs> felt bad because I felt like I was telling him, you know, I felt like I came cause I'm the new guy. Yeah. And I felt like I came in and then ruined everything. Well, that's why I'm like, I just murdered somebody. Yeah, it was like, well, they had a great game before, and then here I come. And it's like, nope, we all killed each other. Yeah. So I was like, whoops. But I I hope we can, you know, maybe play again. But if not... That's okay, too. I think we, I think we could. I, I want to. I just, yeah, me too. I don't want to. Yeah, we'll see. What, we'll see what happens. Anyways, that was that. That was interesting. It was eventful. Yeah. It's a good time. <laughs> Uh, what's, what's, uh, I'm totally blanking on what, what's next. Oh, we got so much to talk about, man. We both watched some movies. You want to talk about those? Yeah, let's get into that. Um, I had Mad Max Fury Road. Is that what it's called? Yep. And you had Whiplash. I had Whiplash, yeah. Who wants to go first? Uh, I feel like I always go first. How about you go? All right. Mad Max Fury Road. It was a good movie. I actually really enjoyed it. (laughs) Here's the thing. Like, I knew this movie was very hyped and very well received. Apparently, it's like the fourth one. Yeah, but the last three were like thirty years ago. Is that with Mel Gibson? Right? Yeah, yeah, the first two were fairly good. The third one was a little off the rails. Okay, I have never seen the original three. Is this based on anything either, or were those just movies? Like I could originally. Tell you. Okay, um, but no, this Tom Hardy's the the main character, right? Max. I think they were based on books. Actually, now that I think of it, it seems like it was it was based on something. I, I think. Be, uh, might be makes sense. Like if I anyway, if I on. had to yeah. guess, it was based on something. Because I feel like things like that, properties like that, that are so like this world's like very 
realized and creative, I guess. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh huh. And it's like, I just, fe- it feels like it feels a book like, or something, like book. right? Yeah. Like you look at Lord of the Rings, it's like, oh, yeah, this, that's something like this is based but, but, on. The Fury like, Road wasn't. You know what I mean? So like it's yeah, one of those the things. War, like I'm just, just talking about like the atmosphere and the world of it, I guess. Yeah. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm looking too into it, but it just, that's the f- impression I got uh-huh. of it. Anyways, mm-hmm. uh, movie was movie was great. Um, I would say the best part. So the uh, the narrative of the movie, there's not much going on. Mm-hmm. It's like probably one of the most linear stories you could have. Like where you're literally just pretty much driving to point A to point B, <laughs> right. and then we just come right back. <laughs> right? Do a big like, U-turn. So like if you, in a macro sense of like the narrative, it's like it's what? very vanilla. Yeah. But for what it lacks in that. Which, you know, it, it puts all its eggs in the other baskets. Like, the action is awesome. Yeah. And to me, I think my favorite part of the movie, b- besides, like, the action and stuff, is, like, the special effects are fantastic. They hold up. Yeah. They hold out great because they're, um, they're like, a lot of it's, like, real effects, yeah, right? practical, yeah. Practical, thank you. So, so there's so many practical effects, like, real explosions, real cars doing crazy yep. shit. And it's so refreshing to see that. And this was like 2015, so it's not even that long ago. Mm-hmm. But like we live in the age of like Marvel movies, man, where it's just like CGI to death. Yeah, they're in a lo- studio with just green screens everywhere. Yeah, and it's yeah. like you just lose some of the magic. Like these guys are literally in Africa on a desert film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You lose some of that magic of the the practical effects, like the actual, because that's a whole thing in and of, of itself, right? Yeah. Like the the art of, of creating practical effects is yep. a whole thing. Real quick, and yeah. this is a little... It's it's based off of practical effects. Okay. Star Wars Episode One. You know how that was all... Like, a lot of CGI and things like yeah. that. I just saw this today. The pod race scene, when they're swooping in... Stop me if you know this, but they're swooping in, and you see, like, the stadiums of all the people and stuff. Yeah. Practical effect. It's a, it's a miniature. They took a bunch of Q-tips, painted the top, like the tips of the Q-tips, like all different colors to kind of represent like clothes and stuff like that. Yeah. Put a fan, like so they they built a stadium, took all the Q-tips, like 4,000 Q-tips or whatever, put them in little slots in the stadium, Yeah. put a fan underneath it to blow them so the Q-tips are like waving and bouncing and stuff like that. Yep. And that's how they shot it. See, that's That's insane. That's amazing. amazing. That's amazing. And that's what I love about that space too. It's like, you have to get so creative yeah. on how you how you make this like CGI. It's just like okay, I want a huge dragon. Let's just <laughs> like, put it in a fucking computer and CGI. Dragon yeah, button the and dragon it. button. And it's <laughs> like it's just something about the creativity of that, and then how good it looks too. Yeah, like a real explosion. Obviously, yep. it's gonna always look better than a CGI explosion. Maybe someday it won't, but. As of right now, it's like yeah, you just I, can't I you beat can, that. You can blur it a little bit where it's like, here's a real exp- explosion, and then you it's almost like extensions for hair. Really, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, I know, and, and they yeah. do that. But, dude, it's like, I don't know. You can feel the power of it. You can see yeah. the heat coming off. It's like you just cannot replicate that feeling. Um, and I just, I just love that. So the practical effects, like, such a huge standout in this film. Like, the cars were so sweet and, like... Yep. The dude uh, on with the... the flamethrower guitar <laughs> just, yeah just going no dude it is like such a fucking crazy film it's yeah. like testosterone city like crazy it it does remind me of borderlands in a way it's, it's like a bunch of psychos yeah racing or something i don't yeah. know it was like it was pretty cool but yeah and then like um what do you call it? i'm like trying to think of the terminology now but like you know all the costumes and stuff and yeah, like and wardrobe makeup, and stuff is like, all fantastic yeah. great you know yep. i just love that i don't know i just thought it was a really when you when you put the effort into those types of things like real effects real you know you know these aren't cgi people yeah. they're just like just feels crazy real crazy costumes yeah. and and paint face paint and all this shit and fake noses and <laughs> all this crazy shit. It's like, I don't know, man. It's just such a bigger impact. So it was sweet. The action was sweet. Um, I don't know. There's not a lot to analyze here. I think it's just like a pretty straightforward, like this is just a good yeah. time, right? I mean, how do you feel about uh, Tom Hardy's performance and in, in, uh, is it, what's her name for Furiosa? Uh, I don't know. Uh, like Philippe, I said. Uh, sh- I did this last week. Yeah, you did. The least, the least showroom. Some Sharon. you're close. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I know who you're talking about. Obviously, Char- Charlize Theron, I believe, would be the 
Um, you know, Tarma Hardy's great. I think she steals the show. I think she's it's by about far. Her. The, yeah, yeah, I think it's by she's by far the best yeah. character in that film. When um, the when the guy that was directing it, because he, he was saying he was like, oh, I was just thinking. I was like, he was like crossing the street or something. We just started thinking about it, and like from the time it took from one end, <laughs> he's like, oh, oh okay. I have this movie. That's dumb. Yeah, uh, but he was like, it was like focused on her. Like she is yeah. like the main character, yeah. and and it just happens to be. Oh, and Max is just there. Yeah, it should be Furiosa, Furiosa, and, Fury and Max. Road. <laughs> Furiosa, for, yeah, yeah, Furiosa, Fury, Fury Road. Yeah, uh, f- Furious, f- Furiosa, f- Furies of the Road of Destiny, or just like Maximum Road, or something. Maximum Road, <laughs> starring Furiosa. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Anyways, it was cool. I really loved like the cars too. They were like super awesome. Like mm-hmm. these uh, kind of like. Like you can kind, of, it kind of reminded me of uh, the Batman. I know that we, you know, it's yeah, a scary subject for us on yeah. on this podcast. But um, like the Batman on that one's like looks like an old Charger, but like just mm-hmm. totally beefed up. And then like you get a lot of that in this movie too. Like kind of yeah. model cars that we recognize, just totally whacked you could, out. Like, you could see. Oh, this is how this yeah. turned into yeah. X. Yeah, whatever. I don't yeah. know. I, I I enjoyed it, but yeah, everyone's like crazy in that movie, rightfully so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, like, like when they're like spraying their mouth, uh, yeah, like silver and stuff. Oh I'm just like, God. I'm gonna die. Yep. So it's like, let's just let's go. Yeah, no, it, it, the they bad don't, guys they don't great too. Explain any of that? Like what? that's the thing. No, no. Like, and maybe they do in the previous movies. Which are, again, I've never seen either. This is my first kind of take yeah. on on yeah. Max. Okay, but like, I I hate and love movies like that. I mean, we we get on uh you know 2022s runner-up game of the year of Elden Ring of just not telling anything and you just kind of have to figure it out for yourself. Right. But like I do like movies where they just like they drop you in. They're using terminology. They're just doing things. Yeah. And through repetition and just through just context clues you're just like oh okay I see how that goes. Like yeah. oh that makes sense. Yeah. Like when they're doing like their steering wheels and they're getting a steering wheel they're yep. like oh I can drive because I have this and then and like they pull that off of cars and stuff and that's how you kind of consolidate power and so, like it's, it's yeah it's pretty like cool you, you can yeah. see the importance of, of yeah. yeah it's it's no you're exactly right show not tell right like that's the first rule yeah and uh so something like league of extraordinary gentlemen yeah, when just, you got to show me the show, yeah. show me the tie <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite scene of all time good that's good. my favorite scene i hope <laughs> i want to pull that after we're done i want to pull that youtube like pull it up on youtube and just show you how bad that scene is I fairly I watched it fairly recently. I watched it this year. That scene's year. so bad. Yeah. Like a tiger actually <laughs> shows up. In the middle of like Antarctica too. Like yeah. they're in so Siberia. White, it's white, white tiger. God, that's so funny. All right, anyways. All right. So that was Mad Max for you. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Thanks for thanks for shining me I'm up. I'm glad you that liked one. it. Okay, I did like good. it. Good. All right. Whiplash. Whiplash is fantastic. Yep. J.K. Simmons obviously is just amazing. Um it was it was an interesting movie. I actually watched it that night, like whenever because we, we recorded on a Saturday. I watched it Saturday, so it feels like I watched it. Oh, yeah, I, it was it's a, a week ago, ago now. Yeah, yeah. But, um, it was it was really good. I actually watched it in bed, and I was like, oh, because like it's one of those. I guess I'll just watch because I'm not super tired yet. But whenever I'm laying down in bed, I'm out in like ten minutes, right? Right. right. And this movie just kept me up the entire. Like I was in. awake and in, right? Yeah. Like, so that's our already kind of like a boon to. <laughs> To that movie, right? Um, if it passes the Tyler sleep test, that's that's pretty not, high praise. How long, how long movies do that? No, yeah, dude. I, uh, what's it called? Um, oh man, seven? I can't, I can't think of it. Yes, yeah, seven didn't pass that. No, test, seven, right? I started dozing a little bit, right? Yeah, I had to yeah. sit up, yeah, anyway, which uh, is just stupid, by the way. Yeah, I had to start sitting up. I, I, I'm just, I'm old, <laughs> uh, but the whip, whip, whiplash was good. I think all the acting was really good. I don't love. Um, the the main character Miles Teller, yeah. I just or the character itself. No, the the actor, the, the actor. Interesting. Um, okay, I don't. It's like a Drew Barrymore situation where like they're good, like they're fine. Yeah, like I have no reason not to like them. I just like I don't particularly care for them. Sure, acted fantastically. Like he, it was good. It was believable when he was crying. I was crying. Oh, no, I wasn't crying, but I was just like, okay, this is like, yeah, it makes sense. Um, it it felt very like real and believable and that like oh i could see that like happen where it's like you're still just out to like it, you know people might hate each other someone might be kind of like trying to screw the other person over but then like uh you still 
as terrible as this person was to you, so like the, the band director, which I think we talked about last week, is just like J.K. Simmons is like a terrible human being. Oh, yeah. And just berates people and pushes people and stuff like that. And in his mind, he's doing nothing wrong, which is crazy. Um, but then like even, even through all of that and the guy was like abused and everything, he'll still come back and still do it. Because yeah. it, cause it's like, okay, like, what are you worth? Or like, how much? Yeah, oh, it's you. You were so put upon, but you're still gonna come back and and if it advances your career, you'll still do it, type of thing. Right. Like it just it felt realistic to me there versus some like kind of piece where it's just like, I don't know, like, oh, you he, you got him fired, and that's the end of the movie, right? There's still that like, <laughs> second half of it. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's like I think we had this conversation last week. It's like. What do you sacrifice for greatness? Right. So I think that's yeah. a that's a main theme of the movie, right? Like it's they're yeah. they're trying to be great. Mm-hmm. And and like actually, so like people talk about being great, you know, people want to be great, they say. They want to be great with no effort. Right. And then there are the few that like it has to be like an obsession. Mm-hmm. Because to be in that top 0.1 percentile, you have to sacrifice right a lot. And it's like, what do you sacrifice? You know. And in the movie, we kind of get a peek behind the curtain. I think music's a great space for that because you mm-hmm. know, there's there's just a lot of that that happens. Like, if you want to be the best in the world, sure, but you're never going out. You're you're practicing all the time. You're ruining your relationships over being obsessed with the music, right? Or on the flip side, you're treating your students like absolute fucking garbage because you're holding them to the highest standard possible. Mm-hmm. And and you're gonna want you you want them to fear you, so you have complete control over the group, right? Like it's yeah. just crazy to me. And it's like, fuck, <laughs> I don't know. It makes you yeah. think, right? No, right. And it's like you know, it skates that line between the both because you can see both sides of it. Yeah, because it, it ultimately like, can you get anywhere close to how well the, they played and how you know it if he wasn't a complete monster and and pushed it. Yeah, what do you what do you have the best band if he wasn't yeah. a monster? Like, no, like would that guy have ever been that level of, you know, like hands bleeding playing the drums type of thing? You know, like that's. <laughs> I told like, you, it's like a sports movie. It's very dramatic, and this is it why is. Yeah. musicians hate the movie. It's like, uh, like first of all, technically, there's just a lot of things wrong with it. That it so hit, hit me with that because I know you mentioned that, and it's like okay, like, like well, first of all, the actors aren't actually playing; it's all dubbed, which is just super cringe because like anyone who actually plays like can tell they're not actually playing and I was holding wondering instruments about that. incorrectly okay. especially the trombones oh my god they're just holding <laughs> them totally incorrectly don't even get me in the way he counts in the band is incorrect some of the terminology they throw around like I remember there's like one scene where they're in the back room before they go on he's like remember bar 68 flat to nine there and it's like uh what? That's not <laughs> something that would ever happen. Like, it's like people playing would, video games and movies and they have like holding the controller upside down. Yeah, or yeah, exactly. It's like, dude, that's such a fucking fantastic point. Yeah. Anytime anyone's playing with a controller in a mm-hmm. fucking movie or something. I've never seen it done correctly. It's like they're playing Soul Calibur and just button mashing yeah. or something. It's like, oh my God. And they're like moving with their body. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. But here's the thing. It's like, I understand because you, you want it to be very visual. Mm-hmm. Like to signify that they're doing something, yeah. which I understand for this movie as well. Like, you know, the trombones are fucking having seizures, but yeah. Look, if you're actually watching someone play trombone, it's not as sexy. It's you know, <laughs> there's not maybe as much movement as you want, right? You know, to signify that. Anyways, so those are just some of the few things. Obviously, people don't practice till their fucking hands bleed. That's, that's is that not the, a thing? No, oh. yeah. that's 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 insane. I mean. I, I love that scene. Theoretically, it could be Every, though, right? Like, yeah, that's it the, could. Yeah, I I don't think I've ever seen a. I don't know. I'm not a drummer either, so maybe I'm totally wrong. But that, yeah. I love that scene because that's like where he punches his the hole in his drum and shit. Like mm-hmm. every musician's been there. Yeah, you're just grinding on like a lick or something, and it's like just not getting it to the point of just unhealthy. We're not getting anywhere, <laughs> and then you just fucking punch a hole in the wall or kick yeah. a stand over or something. <laughs> so, yeah, everyone's been there. So, I, anyways, I don't know. I, I was wondering that of of just like, did they pull this guy because he like actually could drum or drum enough that it's like, oh, that's believable. Yeah, me the, not being a musician, obviously, like it's like, yeah, that looks. No, looks he all right. he drums in the movie, and he talked about this in like um, some of the interviews and stuff. Like he he can drum, so yeah, yeah, which was cool. But um, 
Yeah, I I think it's a great movie though. J.K. Simmons just does such a good job. Yeah, he. You said he won an award for that. Yeah, he he won an Oscar for that. Yeah. I think, dude, he's Best so supporting angry. actor. Yeah, I, think. I mean, he he was unfiltered J.K. Simmons though. Yeah. Like Dude, I, I he has, really... that has some of the best one-liners, <laughs> some some stuff that you should not repeat. Oh my god! But just so fucking funny, yeah. man. Can it's you imagine? Hilarious. Like I'm trying to think, and maybe maybe it does happen. But like, how could anybody in in today's day and age say anything like that and not oh, immediately you can't. just get no, fired? You get like fired. instantly. But I did tell you, like before we watched it. Yeah. My. My band director, man, had some fucking moments. Yeah, not like that. Do obviously, you think, I, do you think he watched that movie? Like, was it like a like a switch? Like, I, I feel like if I was a band director and I watched that movie, and I'm nah, like, all right, it, this, this is think, my new persona. <laughs> no, no, he was. Just, it's, it's just the same. You're gonna. He's just the same type of person in mm-hmm. my mind. Like, I think that's an exaggeration of what he really is. But yeah, the excellence that that he wants, the standards that he sets, so fucking high that he's. Just, doesn't accept anything less. Do you uh, do you prescribe to the whole like can't do teach mentality of like people? because no, like, he was a beast. Like he he. Yeah. I remember a lot of people in the scene were like, "Oh yeah, he he could be a pro yeah. player if he wanted to," but um, he wanted to teach. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, see, I don't subscribe to that. Are there some people where that's true? Absolutely, but I don't think that's a general. Like if you're if you're a great teacher, mm-hmm. you can do. Like, you think? You, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like if like if the best science teachers could work in a lab, I would imagine. Yeah, but also, you know, I guess I guess it also depends on the age group you're teaching, but like could it be something where you're just like you're a gifted teacher first? Yeah, and yeah. Then, so if, yeah. And then profession second. Sure. If you're like teaching elementary school, that's more we're we're more in the realm of like not like childcare, but like kinda in that, you know, you have yeah. to balance that more. Like there's an ed- educational component to that, but there's also a development. Mm-hmm. more development than something like high school chemistry yeah where you where you just like cook meth and and um <laughs> like all those things that come with that but i mean my aunt's a piano teacher and, and she had plenty of people that she was like oh this person's way better than me but like she's a great yeah. teacher like yeah. you know what i mean like it, it's just yeah are you gonna be like the best ever no probably mm-hmm. not because if that's that was your goal you're you're probably gonna be a professional yeah. but i i do think if you're if you're at the top of your game teaching, you, you can do. Now, do your skills fall off? Like, I, I do want to say she's a fantastic piano right, player. Right, right. I just exactly. want to be very she, clear she there. She can play. Yeah. Like, I'm sure yeah, she absolutely. can play, right? So, I guess my point is, like, for a teacher, is it is it like you're trying to get the person you're teaching to be just, like, way better than you? you know oh, I, mean? like, I think like that's JK's always the goal, right? Yeah, exactly. It's just, I like, a healthy mindset, yeah. But that's what makes a good teacher because I think humanly uh, – I want to be the best, yeah. right? Or like yeah. if I'm telling somebody, like if I'm teaching somebody how to like design something, um, it's very hard to walk that pretentious line of like, no, you're bad, no, you're bad, no, not bad, but like this is incorrect, this is incorrect, this is incorrect. And then to see something that is very good or like to have the, at least the humility to do it, like that's tough, right? right. Like right. especially whenever you you kind of graduate from like, okay, I'm I'm designing things too now, I'm I'm critiquing or art directing things. Um, that's kind of the same thing where it's like, that's a gift that a lot of people, like, I don't have that. I try to, you know, you try to, but like for teachers to be able to like, look at someone and be like, holy crap, you're just better. Yeah. But then like foster that. And then yeah. like that, I I mean, I have a lot of respect for people that can do that. Yeah, no, teaching is so difficult and it's, it's hard to find people that are actually like, you know, you got to be a very specific type of person because it's like one of right. the most selfless things, right? Like yep. you have to go against natural inclinations, and yeah. and then there's a whole other facet of like identifying those those kids that are like have a real aptitude for these certain things and fostering that and and sparking that. Like yeah. some of the greatest players or whatever profession, right? Like they someone saw it in them and maybe sparked that in a lot of instances. I would say, right? Mm-hmm. Like I've heard a lot of. Stories like, you know, some some band kids in, like, fifth grade, and then, you know, one of their teachers sees, you know, that they have a lot of talent in, in that and, yeah. you know, starts giving them albums and stuff, like, <laughs> to listen to outside of school and, and start, you know, I don't know, sparking the fire, I guess, so. Yeah. No, but anyways, good movie. Great movie. Great movie. Yeah. I, I don't know it. if it, it's not in your top 10, right? It's in your, like, your top no, 20 or something like that. it's in the fringe, like yeah. It's yeah. in the fringe. I have, like, my top 10 and then, 
like a fringe 20 after that. Yeah. But it's up yeah. there. I, I really enjoyed the movie. It's funny because I watched that and then we just went through Ted Lasso again because we're getting ready for season three coming yeah. out on the 15th. <laughs> a little bit of a different teaching it, it philosophy, the right? Two, <laughs> the two ends of two the ends. spectrum. Uh, Ted Lasso is very good. Yeah, I, I didn't watch the second season. I, I really enjoyed the first one. For some reason, I didn't watch the second one. The second one's very good. Maybe I'll watch that and then in preparation for uh, yeah season three. It's worth it. It's very he good. does a great job, though. That's like one of those instances where you have the perfect actor for this role, right? Well, he wrote it, I think. I, I think yeah, it was based on like a sketch that. or something, right? It was uh, like it was some sort of sketch or commercial or something. Oh, I don't know. Where he, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was like a, a commercial. I don't know if it was a commercial or a sketch. And he was like Ted Lasso. This like that was like the idea of it, like just the very basic premise. And then they uh, that's they news to me. I don't know. Greenlighted for a show. I'm pretty sure that was what it was. Yeah. I don't know. But Every, everyone's so perfect in that movie. It's a TV show, but yeah, yeah, or TV show again. Yeah. It'll be a movie. Six seasons in a movie, man. That's cheeseburger. No, I don't yeah. think it'll make six seasons. No, definitely not. I it, it, it might it was shock. I was shocked how good season two because the season one was. It's like that's a perfect season. Yeah, in my mind, <sighs> right. It's hard um, to follow that up, but the money two, money's too good. I don't think two is as good, but it does some things better. Okay. So it's it's a weird it's a weird thing, but interesting. Yeah. 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 So um one uh while we're on the topic of okay. media. Yeah. I finally got through my eighth Star Wars book. Started picking that back up. Oh, nap time already? Nap time, okay. yeah. No, I'm just kidding. That, that was mean. That was I mean. Finished, I, am I finished the Darth Bane trilogy. Darth Bane. It was fine. Darth I, Bane, though, top five Sith, though, yeah? No. What? I don't think so. You know who my favorite Sith of all time is? Who? Darth Revan. See, I don't. I have no... Con- so Darth Revan's in that. He, oh, really? He finds a, a Darth Revan uh, holocron. Yeah. And Darth Revan's all about like the, the rule of two and stuff like that. Yeah. And he takes that and then... Darth Bane is credited with like basically murder because like there's like a Sith army. Yeah, the Sith army is fighting the Jedi army, and Darth Bane just murders everybody. Yeah, dude, he's so OP. He killed everyone. Yeah, and then it was just him and another uh, another <laughs> chick. Yeah, dude, Darth Bane's crazy, but Zana. you don't you don't like him though. I guess it was fine. I guess the thing is like everyone was really talking about how good these books were. Yeah, and it took me a long time to just be like, all right, I'm just gonna like force knock, myself knock to finish. The first two books were good, and everyone says like the second book isn't good. And I actually enjoyed that one probably the most. Yeah, and the third one was like good, but I was just like, it's really tough. And like I started getting to the point where I'm like, am I just kind of burn out on Star Wars? Um, and then I started reading Thrawn, which is the uh, the the quote unquote like canon version of Thrawn. So, like, Thrawn was, like, kind of, um, I mean, he's my favorite character in the Star Wars universe, but, like, they retconned all those books whenever Disney bought it, and then they brought the character back in with this book, and this is, like, his start, and his, like, you know, moving up the ranks and stuff. Oh, man. It's so Very good. good. Very good. I am, I am so enthralled. Like, I've, I've read, like, six chapters uh, in, like, a day. Which is, I mean, I know that some people finish a book in a day, but, like, <laughs> for me, it's, like, I, I'm just... I'm constantly thinking about it and stuff. And the way it's written, he is like so brilliant. It's so good. Cause he's like asking all these different questions and stuff. He's like, Oh, well here's this. And the way that, uh, Timothy Zahn writes it, and I won't, I won't bore you cause I already see. No dude, I'm, over. I'm in it. I'm the, curious. The way he writes it is, uh, everything as people interact with Thrawn in italics, uh, italics font. He, yeah. he notices everything so it's not just like john said this it would be john said this and then in italicized font it's like his face was flushed his pulse was this his eyes dilated or whatever sherlock holmes situation basically okay every single thing so he's like he's just learning right so he's just (laughs) like okay i see how he reacted here i understand this okay i'm understanding this i'm learning the basic language and stuff like that and he's just just this tactician and the cool thing is uh he just got into a fight and I was like, oh, he's going to just destroy these guys. I was like, nope, he gets the shit beat out of him, right? So it's not like he's just like this perfect super person. It's right. just, he's real smart. Yeah. But then he did it and then then you find out, oh no, he was beat up, but he was beat up on purpose to then, and then all these cards like fall in line. I'm like, it's six chapters in and it's like, I'm not even 20% of the way through and it's like, 
It's so good. Yeah. It, it might be my favorite one I've read so far. Wow. Yeah. Really? So far. Are you still going down like the list? I know there was that website. I am. There, yeah. there were two. There were so many books added. So. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. They they added another like eight books to that list. So it doesn't affect the order that I'm reading them in, except uh, I have to read, I think, three or four more. What is the order? Is it chronologically or is it by no. rating? So they, they specifically said, don't do it chronologically because you will get burnt the heck out because okay. like the first like the if you're doing it chronologically like the new republic it's like oh here's ten thousand years before luke skywalker and <laughs> yeah. it's like well you want to read 20 books of that and like you you don't know anything and like it's its own thing like right. before the jedi and stuff yeah um so what they do is they it's purely based off of just like is the book good is this a good read so it's jumping all over the place which i actually like because um like the Darth Bane trilogy. I mean, that's three books. That's that, that's not a long. Like, I mean, that's around twenty hours, twenty seven hours of of reading. Wow, uh, that's a long time to be in one section. And this is pre, like, way, way, way before the Empire and everything else. Right, right. So then to go from that. Wait, to, is it before. Yeah, so it's before like Episode One, then, right? Oh yeah, it's, it's the Old it's, Republic. Yeah, it's uh, who was in who was in the Old Republic. Or the new, who? Is it the new Republic? No, the old Republic is like there's like a ton of stuff. I mean, this this is after Revan. Yeah, yeah. But it's before a, old Republic's else. after yeah. Revan. Yeah. There's like, but it's like before the roll of two. There's there's a lot of Sith. So then this would be old, at the end of that. Where they start formulating the roll of two. Yeah, he literally he just murders everyone. Yeah, he murders. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Would it be the I don't know what um sparks the end of the old Republic era. I don't even know the eras, man. But I'm the I, I'm, I, I, I'm like, to, but, I don't even know what but is constituted. I'm, is I'm like, going based off like the uh, MMO, which I think is canon. Which, yeah, it, yeah, it is. Which is so. I mean, like my my you know knowledge of the knowledge yeah. of it isn't completely wrong. But that's that's old Republic. Like, um, but like I'm bouncing all over the yeah. place. Where like the first book I read. So I think Lost Stars is still my favorite one. I think anyone that wants to read a Star Wars book should that's do Lost, Lost in between Stars. three and four. Uh, no, that is in between. Uh, that's right before seven. Oh, f- six and seven. Yeah. Oh, I thought that your favorite was like the Dooku thing. One. Dooku's my second favorite. Second that's favorite. Ah, I got gotcha, you. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so six and seven. So six and seven. So you know the like the Star Destroyer. Yeah. Uh, that, that's crashed in in rays going about around that. doing yeah. it. Yeah. That's where that book ends. Ah, so you actually see the history see of why where that Star Destroyer came from and stuff, which ah. is amazing. And it's then, really good. It's it's essentially it gets, every book. And then it gets ruined. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, and then seven, eight, nine. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, that's why. Like, I would totally be in this journey with you if seven, eight, nine weren't so bad. It's just like it but, ruins but, the, but the whole beauty experience is for me. None of that matters. It it does to me though. It does to me. It's uh, like, look, I'm I'm wrong. I shouldn't let that inhibit my yeah. enjoyment of of all of this incredible lore. It just does. Like to me, it's like, what's the point? Yeah. Well, when I hate so the Lost when Stars, I hate the end spot of it. But Lost Stars is canon. But the nice thing is it doesn't mess with anything past the, the sixth movie. So it basically... I know it doesn't mess with anything. Yeah, but it's it's like it's going through those movies from the perspective of two other people on either side of like the conflict. Right. And it's it's awesome. So I like know. If, it, if you're... So I know like uh, like Kevin hates Jedi, right? Like anything that's, that's Jedi based, he's not a big fan of. Okay. Um, but and it, and it doesn't have it. It's just... It's how does that... Uh, religion affect other people, right? And most people are just like, yeah, Jedi, whatever. You know, it's just <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah. sure, the thing, like, whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's the same thing with like, uh, with this Thrawn book, where it's like, oh, yeah, the Jedi were terrorists, or they they tried to murder the the poor emperor, right? And stuff. No, I no. know. I I eat that stuff up. Yeah. But anyway, perspective. It, it's a very good book, and like I said, it's just it's jumping all over where I went from like episode three to Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is like right after episode three, right. to like Leia, which is at the end of episode six. And then yep. it's all over the place, but it keeps things fresh enough um, that I'm I'm very much enjoying it. No, that's awesome, dude. I'm I'm glad you're yeah. still enjoying that. I think that's I, the right I, way to do it too, like jumping around, keeps things fresh, right? Yeah, well, that's the thing is like I, in this book, for whatever reason, I'm actually 
like reading it, reading it. Like other times I'll be like, I'll put on like my noise canceling headphones and just kind of like sit almost in like this meditative thing and just listen to an audiobook. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But this one I'm like, I, I was going to ask, do you do, uh, oh, so you're reading, reading this one. Yeah. But you go back and forth. I go back and forth. Yeah. Um, so you knocked out the Bane ones audiobook style. No, I, I had to, I, do, I did the Bane one, the first two I read, the third, well, read and then if I'm in the car, it would just, it syncs up to the audio. Oh, that's which is cool. cool. Yeah. yeah that is the cool. third one doesn't do that. They Aww. were they were split and I was <laughs> super pissed off. So Aww. and I was lazy. So I would just I listened to that in audio form. Absolutely. And okay. that maybe yeah. that's why I didn't enjoy it as much. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. That uh maybe you could factor in. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah, right. That's cool. I'm glad you're in another I need another to one. I wanted to do Harry Potter, but is that, your, is that your favorite world, Star Wars? Favorite uh, lore? That's all universe? I read, man. I don't read anything else. Right. Like I, w- I was getting ready to go into Harry Potter just from everything with Hogwarts and because I, I was kind of coming off of the Darth Bane thing, like, eh, it's okay, but I don't like, think I'm kind of done. I would enjoy it coming off because I don't, like, look, I enjoy Harry Potter, mm-hmm. but they're very simplistic. I mean, the, it, yeah. they're a very easy read, which yeah. is why a lot of people like them. And that's, yeah. you know, it's a good strategy, but. You're coming off these, to me, seemingly really well crafted, well written <laughs> books. Yeah. Like, my mom is a very avid reader, and she always tells me she couldn't get into Harry Potter because she really enjoys, like, she can tell how well an author kind of crafts, you know, just how, by how it's written. I'm not explaining okay. this well, but yeah. like, and she's like, I just don't like J.K. Rowling's writing. Like, it's just too straightforward. It's not intriguing enough. To okay. Me. You know what I mean? Does that yeah. make any sense? Yeah. You can tell I'm not a fucking reader, I, dude. So, <laughs> it's so like, I will say Timothy Zahn and Claudia Gray are I, I both. I don't even know which one I like more. Me, I might edge it out with Timothy Zahn, but both of them are I would fantastic. edge it out with Timothy Zahn as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, but um, like just how you were explaining like the whole italics thing. It's just the, like the way they can, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Just. The way in which they write, I don't like very, very impressive. I, I think part of it too is, and I don't like this in movies either, where it just keeps cutting to a million different like sub stories, uh, jumping around. Yeah, yeah, especially when like that main one where it's like every scene that Thrawn's in, he steals the show. Like, yeah, it's just like I, the writing is just so totally good. Gross. Every time I get pulled away from him, I'm like, Ugh, this is annoying. Yeah, <laughs> like what are we doing? Yeah, yeah. Same in games, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like let's say you're playing Spider Man, and suddenly you're sneaking around as Mary Jane. <laughs> oh my God, that's a great, that's a great one. I was gonna say, you know, you're playing as uh, like Joel. <laughs> yeah, sure. And you're like, man, I really love this guy. Yeah, I wonder what's gonna happen to him for this whole game. <laughs> then you cut to his, yeah, someone else. I still want to know how they finished that show. I got a couple episodes. Yeah, left. how's that going? You're keeping up, right? Yeah, still like it. Still so, at the same quality. Still at the same level. You'd say? Yeah, I I was starting to cool on it a little bit of last week's episode. Okay. This week, well, technically last week's was. I saw that they were um, at like the one DLC point, right? Where um, yeah. Ellie uh, meets her friend. I forget what her name is. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so, good. That was good. Yeah. That was a good episode. Yeah, I heard that was good. I heard that was really good. So I enjoyed that DLC. I remember that. I never played it. Really? Yeah. I I know you're gonna hate this. I might, I might try the the PC version when it comes out. Why would I hate that? I know you're just sick of the the series, and I don't want to. As long as we don't talk about it, yeah. Okay, <laughs> fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, go for it, but, man. Go for it. I, well, it's a good game, man. It's dude, good. I, not the second one. The second one sucks. I, I'm just I'm looking second for the next. Terrible. I'm looking for the next one. That's why I want to play Sea of Thieves with you because it's like next the next game. Everything out right That's now. That's not the I'm next not, one, my friend. That's. That's the past yeah, one. Well, I know. I'm just saying, like, Hogwarts was really good. Hogwarts was very good. I mean... Dead Space and... and Hi-Fi, Hi-Fi Rush, Rush, Hogwarts, Dead Space. Definitely a solid three we, we've played this year so far. I know. But Comic Cart, Forspoken, not quite. And I'm still super sad about Wanted Wanted Dead. I had such high hopes for that. Sorry. It was terrible. <laughs> so, yeah. That's a big rip. But... We'll get there, man. Yeah. I think we're, I think we're on I think we're on the the big ones so far. I think we've yeah we're on the we're on the relevant titles. Yeah, because here's the thing: like the whole point was okay, we want to be prepared for game of the year talk, 
Right. I think we have played all the contenders so, thus far. Maybe not for, for game of the year. Yeah, I agree with you. Maybe not. Maybe there's some indie games we missed. I uh, I don't know. I I, don't I know do that. have some indie games that I might yeah. might shoot your way. Yeah. Not that I'm like, oh, I'm gonna burn hours on them, but uh, oh, you can if you want. You're always the indie game king. I do love indie games so much. Yeah. They're good, man. They're, I think they're. Odd, I like, think we live in the era of. I think we live in the era of remakes, but <laughs> yeah, of, we uh, sure do. Like indie games, I think you know they're often a lot better. of the time they're better than these AAA games. Yeah, I think maybe not recently. Like Hogwarts, Dead Space, all very good, both very good. But, but think about it this way: um, God of War, very good. By the end of the Elden Ring, very good. I think the, is it March? The, when does Resident Evil Four come out? This month, right? Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, out, of the fucking four, out of the game, four, dude. out of the four good games we've played, yeah. two have been remakes. <laughs> yeah, but well, I'm assuming. But the remakes, uh, to be fair, uh, Resident Evil might not be good, but I'm it, assuming it's it'll looking be fine. pretty good. Yeah, the remakes have been. I guess they're hit or miss. I I feel like they've been very good though. Yeah. Oh, Resident, Resident Evil Two, yeah. like that was incredible. Yeah. Um, to me, that kind of kicked things off in my mind. You agree with that chronologically? <laughs> Uh, Probably wasn't uh, obviously not the first one, but like I don't know after Resident Evil Two, Spyro's before that, right? Crash, yeah, stuff like that. But that was like I don't know. Everyone was like, "Oh, this is the potential of." I loved Spyro, by the way. I mean, Spyro was great, but I I would say it kicked off the idea of oh remasters don't cut it anymore. I could I could get behind that. Yeah. Well, I always say this too. Like you have to think about it from the artist's perspective, from the like people who are designing the game. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you're just remastering someone, like you can't name a more boring thing for an artist to do. Right. For a creator to do like, Oh, remember that story we told? Remember, remember this? We're going to do the exact same. We can't change a thing. Well, a lot of the time that's that's just for like new studios, get their feet wet too. Yeah, I know. Like look at, uh, look at three, four, three. Where it's like, right. okay, here's a new studio. We're going to prop up Halo. Yep. Uh, here's a test run, remake one and two. <laughs> no, no, no. You're right. You're right. Not remake. So, sometimes, you know I mean. yeah, that's definitely the case. But like, I feel like if you, if you want investment from the creator, it's got to be like, okay, here's the original property, but you, you kind of have free reigns to, yeah. to explore this a little bit more or change some aspects of it, right? And I think yep. you get a better result that way. Well, that's the thing with Dead Space. Like, they, they weren't even part of it. Like the original creators, like yeah. They, if I Dead watched Space, a video was, with, with them, like, team. oh, look, that guy's talking now, or oh, he actually looks like the guy now, or oh, that's so, like, yeah. I don't know how much of that was just like playing it up for the camera or whatnot, but it was like <laughs> they seemed to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. That was that was a, that was a good game. Yeah, Dead Space is good. I got real into like the lore and stuff. I <laughs> just went like, down watched dark all these videos. Yeah, they apparently EA was asking such a if, creepy. They, they were like, hey, should we make two and three? Like, uh, so I was like, yes, two definitely. Please make two. <laughs> Can you fix three? I don't know. I heard three was pretty rough. I don't know. I'd play three with you. But there was speculation that uh, they were going to make four because like three leaves off on a cliffhanger. Yeah, but no one played it. So, <laughs> so what's the point? Yeah, true. Imagine remaking three, but like good. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. does this give you the opportunity to I wonder if you right can. the wrongs? Yeah. yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. But I, I, what I'm saying is if you're remaking three. Yeah. A, can you do it co-op still? Or do you need to kind of like put it back closer to yeah. one and two? Yeah. And then is that worth the the extra development and time and energy and, and stuff? Like does know. three really become like a like a three B? Like it's like, okay, this is a remake of three and it's basically just like retconning three and well, and I never over. played it obviously, so I don't know exactly why. Yeah. People didn't enjoy it. Um, so, that, I mean, it depends on that, right? Yeah. What would you have to fix about the game? What didn't work about it? So, I don't know. Only way we wanted to find out. No. No, I'm not playing it. <laughs> <laughs> Too many balloons to, to pop. Dude, exactly. The balloons are more scary than the whatever they're called. Xenomorphs. Yeah. No, <laughs> Is great. that what they're called? No, the necromorphs. Necromorphs. Yeah. Xenomorphs. I don't know what I'm talking about. Xenomorphs. Aliens, right? Probably. Yeah. That, that was, that was okay. Aliens was not bad. Or oh, alien it's uh, Women's History Month. It is. And uh, speaking of aliens, she's pretty cool. I know Ab- yeah. we, Abby was um, asking us to do like uh, top five badass women or something. We could do that. Yeah. Not right now, but. Not right now. <laughs> okay. but she would be up there is what I'm saying. Yeah. I forget what her name is. 
in the movie. Oh, uh, Sigourney Weaver's character. That's her actual name, but yeah. I don't know what the character's name is. Uh, she's I'm, cool. Yeah, she's cool. I didn't really like Alien. Kill Kill Bill. I forget what her name is. Well, don't that spoil too. it. No, I'm just saying. I'm just spitballing. I, yeah. You know, there's a lot of them. Yeah. There's a lot of them. Martha Weasley. She was badass. Yeah. She probably wouldn't make it on my top. I don't know. Martha Kent, though, might. Is Martha Kent badass, though? Absolutely. Yeah. My son can wipe out the universe. Yeah. But I still ground him. Yeah. That's badass. Yeah. Okay. Well, now you're getting. Yeah. Who else can ground Superman, bro? Maybe like. Batman. But Anyone with a piece of green rock. Batman. Yeah. And Lex Luthor. Yeah. Um, Who were both badasses in their yeah. own right, too. <laughs> so by, by, but she she doesn't even need a kryptonite to do it. Oh. That's what I'm saying, oh. bro. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. She she might be the most powerful being in she the DC uses universe. She full name. And he's, That's he's, what I'm saying. Because like, if you think about it, Superman's one of the most powerful characters. Uh-huh. But you know what's more powerful than that? Having power over Superman. So it's like Yeah, but then Martha I, Kent I, I becomes think, the like, most Lo- powerful Lo- Lois Lane one then. Yeah, you because think Martha Kent dies, Superman doesn't come like become evil. Yeah, because she's such a positive influence on his life that he realizes that that's not what she wanted. See where it's Lois Lane, he's blinded by rage. Yeah. So, so Lois so, has more power over him. No, I don't think so because I think it's more powerful to have that restraint. Actually, <laughs> okay. I think that's a that's a test of will right there. Whereas, yeah, whereas he just goes off the rails. Right, but if we're talking, we're, ta- but we're talking about power of the. She has woman. power over Superman. She yeah. she has reinforced in his psyche <laughs> that okay. he must do better, even though she's dead. Yeah. Also, the Joker didn't kill her. That's fair. <laughs> so it might change things. That's also, she wasn't murdered. She wasn't murdered. So okay, that okay. might factor into yeah. things a little bit. Oh. I'd hate to see what happened to this planet if, like, if somebody Martha murdered Kent Martha Kent. Popped. Is Martha, is Martha actually dead? I don't. Is know. that canon? It depends know. what fucking universe, universe we're talking yeah. about. In the in the new DC universe. Let's call up uh, Snyder. James Gunn. Not Snyder. James Gunn. Yeah. Can't say Snyder. Why not? I don't know. That's just like a thing now. You aren't allowed to say. Zack Snyder or he, James he Gunn appears only. at night. No, James Gunn comes and, <laughs> and <laughs> murders you. Up. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, it's scary. We have a poll, right? We do have a poll. Yep. Um, this was the ultimate poll in my mind. I think you're right. Still got beat by the taco poll. I don't think I'll ever have a greater idea <laughs> than that. The most amount of people who ever voted yeah. was uh, taco poll. Tacos. Oh, by the way, 23 years ago today, the PS2 was first released in Japan. That's awesome. Yeah. What is the what is your favorite PlayStation two game of all time? This is the game Ooh. where it's just yeah, this is good. That's a good one. Out of all time, what's what is my favorite PS two game? I'll go first. Go I it. think Sly Two, Band yeah. Band of Thieves. That's a great game. Here's the thing. I think that game is incredible. People will sleep on it. I think Slide it holds two. up. Yeah, dude. Yeah. The story was so good. Such a fun game. Like, I would play it to this day. I'm really trying to think because I, I don't really have one. Like, nothing nothing standing out. Like, nothing oh, my gosh, out. this is, like, the best. I mean, a Tekken, but, like, even those, like, Tekken 3, I think I enjoyed more than 4 or 5. Like, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, huh. What about, uh, have you seen the like new so, Tekken? So Tekken Tekken 8. Um, is there not something, trailers, something but gameplay. New? No, is there a Tekken 8 Yeah, they're, they're showing, showing off some of the characters. Oh. Yeah. Are you sure it's Tekken 8 and not Street Fighter? No, Tekken 8. Tekken 8. Okay. Yeah, I did, you gotta I watch did it. not you gotta see watch it. it. Yeah, I gotta yeah. go see it. Yeah. Well, let's, let's finish this then. What are you doing? What? <laughs> Just kidding. What? No, I, I now I'm excited. I want to read Thrawn and play Tekken 8 or watch Tekken 8. Tekken 8. Looks interesting. I think I, Street, I Fighter, I think, I would, I think Street I, Fighter looks better if I'm being an objective non-fighting game person. Uh, oh yeah, from a style perspective, dude, Street Fighter looks so sweet. Like it makes me want to play the game. I've never played a Street Fighter in my life. I'll play Street Fighter with you. Yeah, yeah. I'm very bad at uh. I buy every Street games. Fighter. You think I'm bad at puzzle it. games? Ugh. Would you would you rather play a fighting game or a puzzle game? Fighting, because 
Fighting games are cooler. Really? Absolutely. So you'd rather play a fighting game over Portal? I feel like I'm. Portal's not a puzzle game. Portal is Portal's a, a diamond. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a- so so platinum <laughs> redefines the genre. Diamond eclipses it. Okay. Whereas like any non puzzle game fan will have fun with Portal. Oh, I don't know. About, Portal I mean, Two. Portal okay. Two specifically. Yeah. yeah. Because even though like. There were times where it's like, oh man, I'm like, I don't know what to do. But it it was always like, I want to see what they say next. I, like, where is this going? Like, yeah. I was invested in the story of it. Okay. And the acting and the jokes were hilarious. I see. That's how I feel great. about Hi Fi. Yeah. Like for Same Hi-Fi thing. Rush, like I, 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 the gameplay was fine, but I actually it was thought the, the gameplay story was pretty that, sweet. But yeah, it was. But the story was what kept me going. Because in that game, I know we have a whole episode on this, but in that yeah. game, it's like I love just getting locked in to the rhythm like yeah. i would be playing just like i wish like there was a camera on me i'd be bu- be bopping around <laughs> like and it's yeah. just like oh man just getting yeah. right in rhythm I mean, that's the point of the fucking game but it's by the end you're not like tapping it. your foot anymore because you just you you're so ingrained like you are feeling and it, yeah. like when you're just perfectly synced with the beat just destroying these combos and just flowing it, it's like a awesome well, state zen, especially yeah. in the end of the towards the end of the game where it gets very complex in terms yeah. of like there's a lot of different enemy types and you have to do certain things to maybe defeat those enemies. Yeah. But you can fl- like you're doing it well and you've recognized everything. You have like a strategy and combos. Whatever. Have you ever played Thumper? No. Mm. Xbox just asked an hour ago, what's the GOAT greatest game of all time? <laughs> you have an answer for that? Just the GOAT. The GOAT. The GOAT. The goat. What? O- Ocarina of a Time, Super Mario Bros. 3, all Halo games, <sighs> Skyrim, this. Skyrim isn't even a picture in the of market conversation. Themes. I'm sorry. Uh, Goat Simulator. <laughs> nice. Elden Ring. Are these com- like Yeah, I mean the comments. Yeah, I mean the comments. All right. I think. Uh, greatest uh, game of all Witcher time. Witcher 3. Witcher 3 is not bad. Uh, greatest game of all time. We so together oh, we said Call of Duty Four, yeah that, that, and again, the argument for this I think makes perfect sense. Name another game like in recent times, you know, there's been some things like Fortnite yeah. might be like the most recent example of it's like Greatest game. everyone was on the Fortnite. Yeah, but I don't train. think Fortnite is the greatest game. I think it no, does. But it, Call of Duty Four is what I'm saying is like that was a game where it extends beyond the gaming community like everyone was playing call of duty yeah everyone was playing call of duty like that was the thing to do even if you were a cool kid in high school you had call of duty yeah and you were playing it yeah. so it's like i don't know uh, so good i think greatest game of all time uh if you're talking impact yeah then i think i think you're looking at uh either pokemon or minecraft would be mine too. God no, <sighs> Jesus Christ! I will give you potentially Minecraft. Pokemon will never be in the greatest game of all time. I'm saying impact. I'm not talking. I'm not talking like. Uh, oh yeah, well, like popularity or, or impact. There's, there's a difference. Both. No. In, like, cultural impact. Pokemon absolutely. Yeah, yeah, probably. And it was a game. Like the game started that, right? Yeah, like the, yeah. Uh, and everything well, else spawned the off show? of it. I think the game was the first. Show. The cards were first. I don't think so. Shrewsbury? No. I, think the game was, I, I don't think so. All right. Well, um, we had a poll. Yeah, go for Sorry it. I'm, I'm actually you. looking up what came. I, I, I remind me to respond to those. Those are those are two good things to respond to for us. Yeah, maybe we'll formulate a couch company response. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a combined. Um, we had a poll. I think it's the ultimate poll. Although the other it, it was the, the other two questions were pretty good. It was what the the game game came first, then cards. I believe so. So game cards show. Uh, nine nine yeah ninety six. Wow, I wasn't born. The no, the games came out ninety six. Um, I'm seeing when the card the show came out. Okay, when okay. did the card? When did the game uh, ninety six cards? I'm, sorry, I'm, I, I'm all right. Up. The poll we had. Oops. Poll we had. Very simply, cats versus dogs. A question is old as time itself. And this was a close one. Yeah, hit me with it. Uh, real quick. So. Uh, the show came out a year after, um, and then the game. Yeah, the game was first, and then so the game and the cards were the same year. Oh, so we tied. Sure, sure. I mean, the show was first. 
No, you said the show came after. Yeah, I'm saying the games came first. I said the cards came first. Right. So then I would win. You said the game and the cards came out the same year. Same year, yeah. Still game first, then the cards. A month. Oh, my gosh. Uh, all right, no, no, I don't care. Fine, I don't even fine. care. Fine. We didn't even have a cheeseburger on it. Look at it. Look we're, at we're filming it. a podcast. All right, go ahead. All right, Cats <laughs> vs. Dogs, ultimate question, greatest greatest question of all time. Yeah. You ever see Cats vs. Dogs? Was that what the movie was called? I have that on VHS, I think. Where the cats were evil? Yeah. 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 I feel like that's kind of rude. No. I feel um, like, you, well, yeah, but like that came who's out. Who's the villain when it comes to cats versus dogs? Are you serious? Dogs think, aren't the villain. Nah, dogs are absolutely the villain. How? Because they're, they're so easy. happy. Yeah, they're, they're it's a so it's happy an act. and loyal. It's an and, act. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those it's are all the qualifications of a villain loyal, happy, hungry. Yeah, but why do you, why do you think that? It's because you Playful. were conditioned from a young lad mm-hmm. that cats are evil and dogs are all cute. They are all cute. And I'm just saying. That's and what the media wants you wrong. to think. Well, the media's got me. <laughs> um, cats versus dog. Dogs win at 56% of the vote. Very close. That was pretty close. It was tied for a while, and then I had to kind of nudge yeah. people to <laughs> untie this for us. So 56% said dogs any over comments? cats. Any comments? Any rationale on why dogs are better? Uh, one comment from me saying we need to break the tie. So no, oh, okay. no comments. <laughs> Like I said, dude, the passion really came out for the tacos, not this one. But I just don't see it. Yeah, because you're a heartless dummy. No, 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 no. no, okay. no. Okay. Dogs love everybody. Yes. Okay. Okay. So why, like, I'll re- that just means to me that their love is worthless. Wow. Uh, no. If they're just giving it away to everybody, who cares? Now no, that you're it's, cat, it's unconditional. Now you're it's unconditional. You're, I'll give you that. Yeah, exactly. It's that's but fantastic. They love everybody. You walk in, you walk into a house with a dog. Dogs jumping all over you. It's yeah. like, oh, it's so happy to see you and stuff. And I'm so happy that that he's yeah. happy. But a cat, a cat comes up to you and claws it's you like, in the face. No, and no, 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 no. They're uh, kind of, uh, look, uh, I'm just saying, a cat comes in. Yeah, and it's like it doesn't just give its love to anybody. Sure, it selects you. Like, and, and it's just like, hey, no, I think I think I will let you. I think I will let you. you rub my belly. I think cats are toxic. Dude, Morgana they, curled up they, just on in a lap. Like yeah. I, I have a whole they Instagram. Get you hooked in. I have a whole Instagram. They get you hooked in, and then they'll treat you like a are. fucking bitch. You don't the next have to take day. them out. You don't have to take. You don't have to get, take them walking. I love going for a walk with a dog. Just cleaning it's up great. after them and stuff. That's less fun, but they don't make robots for dogs. We have it. We, there's a robot for a cat. Good. They're irreplaceable. Yeah. No, I mean Good. I'm talking like to clean up after them. Oh, a little little That's cat true. bot. I'm allergic to cats. That's a big one. Yeah. Okay. Well, fair enough. <laughs> um, dogs are great, man. They're just so much fun. They'll always... You can come come home from a bad day at work. Yeah. And they just brighten your day every time. Where a cat might... They just eat everything. Be like, oh, you, fuck you. And just yeah. leave you. Yeah. And you, see, you, you maybe you really need that cat in the moment. It's always on their time. It's always on their time. Yeah, but... Whenever they want to see you, they have all the power. Dogs are just like, hey, man, guess what? I have the title of man's best friend. I wonder why that is, because I'm the greatest. Yeah. 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 Cats aren't man's best friend. I, no way. Can't rely can't on a cat. It, yeah, you can. If I'm in a pinch, I want a dog on my on my team, bro. Like that What's dude. Your, what are you doing on the team though? What am I doing on the team? Yeah. Like I don't dogs, know. Dogs like, are not as smart as cats. Cats are smarter. Nah, it's debatable. I'm just That's saying. 100 percent debatable. I feel like like they they look at our, our we have cabinets locked up with child locks because our cats are are smart. Okay. We, we barricade our door, and now all three cats push on the door at the same time to open up the door. Okay. I'm just saying, like, they're, they're pretty... Dude, I mean, like, a, a little boy falls down a well. It's not... We didn't go to a cat. Yeah. We didn't go to a cat. We went to a, do- a dog, man. The dog's just yapping around. It the just dog- happens to him. The dog's probably like, hey, I'm so hungry. Please feed me. Not like, oh, hey, Timmy fell down a well. No, no, no. And, and, and then what do you do? You take Timmy, him out back and Timmy shoot him. Well. Then you take him out back and you shoot him. That, and it, it made everyone movie? cry. No. Different movies. Old Yeller. Who, well, who? This is Lassie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Old Yeller and Lassie, yeah. Well, whatever. Everyone cried probably when Old Yeller down. got put down, because that's the saddest thing that could ever happen ever. All I'm saying, if dogs are so cool, like a pig w- can just come in and do their job. What are you talking little about? Little pig. You, people, little okay, A, people like pigs. Yeah. And B, I don't understand what you're talking about. I'm just saying like dogs aren't like this this incredible 
thing. Like if if you have like a sheepdog or whatever, yeah, and it's just yapping and biting and being angry and everything else. Not being like, angry, it's structure. It's not structure. It has to herd the cattle inside. Yeah, it's like this. this that's a, that's this an important job. Dumb aggressive way of doing. Find things. a cat that does me that. A cat. I have a herd of fucking cows. Find me a cat that gets them all back in the barn at the end of the night. That's smart. A cat would go over and talk to him. That's and just smart. Be like, hey, no, hey, a hey, cat would going. lay in the sun all day. Yeah, that's uh, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, I'm just saying, cats are cats are I, like they're always they're just chilling, man. They sleep. No, half they're the day selfish. And, they're they're not selfish. Yes, they are. What are they selfish of? Everything. It's all about them. Uh, so are dogs. No, dogs. it's all about you. Oh, okay. If it's all about me, like the dogs wouldn't bark it, it just for everything. And they wouldn't be like, oh, hey, play fetch for me. It's like, hey, I just threw this ball 200 times for you. It's like, nah, I want to play some more. Super selfish. That's great because the Super dog is selfish. like, look, you got to get your steps in for the day, man. Let's do it. Yeah, Let's go cat, out. Let's, I'm excited. Be, the cat would be like, hey, Positive. you have a laser pointer. I'll play with you. If you don't, no big deal. Whatever. I'm here. No. Cats you can play with the cat whenever you want. No. Yeah. No, you can't. I, I'll if give a cat you a, does I'll, not want to play it, I'll give you play. a laser pointer right here. I bet you all three cats bolt to you within. But that's because, 20 like, seconds. I have a magnetizing personality. Like, that's understandable. They can tell every pet to wants them. to play with me. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, put it in a Joe Schmo, maybe not. Maybe not. I think it might be a coin flip know. then. I don't know. <sighs> well, the audience agrees with me, as always. Yeah, I guess so. As I feel always. like, I feel like dogs have a, a pretty pretty low ceiling though cats have a pretty high ceiling no yeah i mean how you can't go past like take your best dog yeah the best cat is like tiger or a lion best mammal high ceiling baby that is a high ceiling (laughs) can't have it as a pet though yeah you could (laughs) it's good luck not not recommended (laughs) not recommended no you got what you got like a wolf that'd be cool like a wolf that's That's pretty cool top top dog What's the top dog? I don't know. A wolf, a wolf is probably up yeah. there. An we African had, we had African painted dog. I don't know. We had, we had a conversation at work about who would win in a cobra mongoose situation. Cobra mongoose? Yeah. Mongoose yeah. are pretty fierce. Mon, mon, mongoose? Yeah, mongoose. Mongooses. I think mongoose is plural. They, they're naturally resistant to the cobra venom and they just Are they decimate. actually? Yeah. Oh. That was the whole thing is like people were just like, no, like a mongoose wins like 80% of the are time. Are cobras ones that bite or do they restrict? Both. Yeah, they so have a cobra could just like choke King, them out, King right? Could, no, like no, that's what I mean. Like that's mon- what I'm mongooses saying. will just destroy them, just shred them. Really? Yeah. I destroy a mongoose. Mongooses don't have natural predators. They're what? in like the top 100 like worst invaders because Wor- of it. Worst invader. They're the yeah. Switzerland of the animal kingdom. I don't know about that. They, it's just they come in. Try and to invade Switzerland, can, dude. You can't do it. You can't. No. I bet some. Look at could. a map at World War II. All right, Germany just spreading all over the place, and they go whoop right around. <laughs> <laughs> so like, Maybe it's not worth it. Maybe you know. Well, it's just a very easily defensible position. Yeah, that's what I mean. So and like, why I would think you they waste have mandatory? On that? Not that I'm not that I'm trying to <laughs> say what what great tactics Germany had, but you know what I mean. Well, they they did initially. Yeah, and then they just went south uh-huh. for them. Luckily, I don't know the, the thing about that. I think I'm if right. It's not saying Prior Ryan. I'm not. I'm not up on it. Part of it's in Saving Private Ryan. That's no, that's fair. But we outplayed them, I would say, for D Day. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I think how D Day worked, it was like Omaha was like the worst place or one of the like I mean we attacked several different beaches, I think, but Omaha is like one of the worst mm-hmm. places to attack. And so they were like, okay, they'll never attack here. Yeah, so it was, it was less yeah. less defensible. But we did other shit like fake Faking communications and they had yeah. like these inflatable tanks and stuff that they were moving around that people were like carrying. So like any <laughs> surveillance from above, yeah. like it, we tricked them. Is that true? I think so. Yeah. Huh. We're getting a text about it right now to yeah. confirm or deny, okay. but I believe I'm correct Thank, on this thanks, research department. Absolutely. Third pla- third research department too. Yeah. He's climbing the ladder. Yeah, I know. I haven't seen our second place. She's uh. I don't know. She's, she's lounging that. around. She's she might get demoted after, soon after all the the cat talk. Yeah, what can we uh, expunge that from the record? <laughs> no. All right, you can you can yell at me all you want, but you can't take her on. Nope, I'm yeah. afraid of her. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Dogs are the best. It's confirmed. Mm. Star Wars is mm. okay if you read the books, and uh, being a musician will leave you with bloody hands and uh, apocalyptic. Apocalyptic wastelands or uh, where humanity goes to die. I, d- yeah, I don't want to. 
I would not want to be in that no. movie. Probably top five worst universes to be in. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I thought Dune was Sandy. Holy cow. I thought episode one was Sandy. Oh, no, it's episode yeah. two. Fuck. Yeah. No. Of course, I'm right. I knew, I knew what you meant. I so know. Okay. I, <sighs> fucked up. Fucked it up. But um, what was I going to say? Oh, did we learn anything else today? I don't think so. Uh, if you want, if you want a factor meal, reach out. Yeah. I'll send you a free, Wait, so you, free box. I was not quite understanding how that worked. So you have an extra box that you're going to give to someone, I, or you I, have a code. No, where they can I have. For free. I have a code where you gotcha. can you can sign up for Factor. You yep. get your free box, yep. and then you either continue because you like it, or you cancel it. Yeah, free stuff's nice. Yeah, unless it's not good. I think it is better than what I was eating. There you go. <laughs> so hey, it's better than oatmeal. It has Tyler's stamp of approval. You're, if that you're means not going to find a better meal for two minutes and zero work. True. And I like to remind the audience he believes that egg waffles are better than steak, egg, and cheese bagel. Yeah, egg waffles take longer than two minutes to cook properly. Yep. So that holds true. Yep. That's all we got. All right. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it if you made it this far. Did we talk about anything about D&D? What did we learn for that? Oh, shit. Uh, we that learned a, a lot segment. from that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I forgot back. we had that's that right. conversation. That's fine. <laughs> we learned, uh, yeah, we learned a couple of things that we had interesting <laughs> points. We learned we not learned to murder we your might teammates. not be invited back to d Yeah, we, we learned we might be uh, <laughs> Hellcast. Uh, we'll just do a two-man D&D that's, yeah. session. <laughs> Play some balloons. Yeah, that's that's our D&D. All right. Thanks for, for listening if you made it this far. Um, we appreciate you. Check us out on couchcompany.games. All of our links are there. And vote on the polls at Couchco Games on Twitter, man. We want to hear from you. Tell yeah. us tell us why cats are better than dogs. Dogs are better than cats. Or leave a comment if you like hamsters or something. Like a, There's like a curveball. There's a person out there. There has to be. I mean, Miranda likes uh, rats. She might like dogs more than rats. I don't know. She likes rats, though. Ratatouille, great yeah. film. Most underrated Pixar film. I've said that a hundred times, and I will die on the hill. Ooh. Die on it. Okay. All right. Thanks are we, for, are we real, sorry, real quick, because we, we oh, just ended. Uh, we're ending. Are we doing any? Are we just going to talk about what we're assigning each other? Is that going to be like, we'll put it out on Twitter? We can put it out on Twitter, yeah. All right, we'll figure it out. I don't want to. Did you have something cooked? Possibly, but I might change let's, it up anyway. Yeah, so let's think about it yeah. and okay. check out at Couchco <laughs> Games on Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we're assigning each other. All right. Um,. We'll be here, same time, same place, next week. Thanks for joining us on the couch. Peace.